the goods from the woods. My name is Rivers Langley. And I'm Carter Glasscock. And our friend Sam is at the doctor's office, but uh, he might be popping in here later. I told him to make as much noise as possible, but it's all right. Sitting on mic four is our friend. He is a comedian. He's a writer. He's a podcaster. He is the author of the new Archie Horror Special pop chocolate shop of horrors our friend the boy detective hey i'm jordan morris hey. I, I hope sam's okay Are oh we yeah worried? Oh, he's fine he's we want to just leave that dangling <laughs> oh no <laughs> it's a pretty routine a routine thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah a little yeah, little okay. little checkup yeah he's he's perfectly fine yeah. so but yeah if he does burst in here in the cloud of okay. uh, you know covid vapors then we'll we'll all be able to see <laughs> it uh, <laughs> sure or yeah. just, is covid visible now? it is now is that where that's, we're at that's, that'd be convenient visible. wouldn't it yeah that's kind of would actually just like a purple spray <laughs> that's you the, just kind of dodge it. Yeah, that's <laughs> but he's on that purple weed pin. That's that's more Sam style. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He's goofed up on the green. Yeah, steam he's, as... he's mostly more messed up on. Uh, he's real messed up with, on weed. And uh, I think <laughs> the doctor's going to have a talking to him. Our, his parents, they're going to be there. Our, our guest Rob Hayes last week when Sam walked in, he was just like, "Are you okay?" He's like, "Yeah, I just ripped a huge dab." I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> and he was, so you're not okay. <laughs> yeah. He was like, and he even said he was like, "As I was doing it, I realized I'm going to walk in here and everybody's going to think I'm sick." And it's like, doesn't, no, just doesn't <laughs> being high at the doctor sound like a fucking nightmare? Oh, I, w- I would rather go to jail. I'd rather be arrested. I was thinking the other day how bad it would feel being buzzed at the dentist. Oh, God. Yeah. I hate that. Like drunk or, or high? Uh, Both. I was thinking specifically drunk, but also high is probably a nightmare, too. Yeah. Yeah. Drunk might take the edge off it. Like, you'd get, like, a little too familiar with the dentist. Oh. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, before he roots uh, around Do you always want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like, oh, be my guest. Go my You know, like, saying stuff like that. You're a little drunk. Yeah. This you're one. high, though. You're just thinking about, like, the way your ears feel. And <laughs> right. Do you ever suck on that nitrous hose? Tell me the truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, come on. You ever take a little hit in between pages? Come on, you can Obviously. tell me. Obviously, they do. It's right there. They got a big tank of it, <laughs> and they're all drug addicts. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> that's why you get in the game. The pills, the, <laughs> right? The pills, the, baby. That goof gas. How many goof pills can you end up with on the end of the day? That's the that's the game. <laughs> <laughs> We're a conspiracy podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All Doctors are just in it for the pills. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah all... COVID's a purple mist. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. Well, I've got a comic book coming out. <laughs> Uh, uh, normally family friendly Archie Corporation. Uh, yeah, I think that there's um, uh, mind control devices and fluoride in the water. Oh, great, great, great. Oh, awesome. cool. I'm glad you agree with us. Yeah. All of the chemtrails. Under- you guys do some chemtrail stuff? I can, oh, yeah. I can oh, with that. Oh, man. I got uh, very early on, there was a chemtrail Facebook group oh. that was run by a guy I went to high school with. A and Facebook group. Where they're really keeping oh, on John oh, this, this is like when Kim Trails were a thing. It was like 2013. Right. Uh-huh. And uh, it was a guy I went to high school with. And, this is uh, like the air, era of flash mobs and stuff, right? Or is that, uh, is that around, around the time? Like, maybe like four or five years out from flash four or five, mobs. Okay, okay. I feel like that's like a 09 sort of situation. is like one blur to me. And... Yeah. I was already in LA at that point. And yeah, it was a guy I went to high school with. And I, I didn't even say anything <laughs> that bad. I was just like, uh, you know, th- this man uh, is the vigilante known as Batman. I just accused him of being Batman uh, okay. for trying to raise okay. awareness about the Joker's blimps, uh, you know, poisoning the parade. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, not an accusation to throw around lightly. (laughs) And boy, he blocked me from that group and sent me a really fucking nasty message. He was so he is Batman. (laughs) Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just just I mean, and again, I I don't think you were in the wrong. (laughs) Oh, no, I was being a dick, but it was funny. uh, You know, any Facebook group (laughs) has the potential to go to get fucking wild immediately. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, if you were on a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup (laughs) Facebook group, like, that shit is going to get toxic and violent immediately. So I imagine chemtrails, something, uh, you know, that's an interest of uh, controversial wackos. Yeah, Yeah, red-pilled QAnon folk. Uh Yeah, yeah. But, God, I, this is probably a cold take, but, like, <laughs> the chemtrail people I knew, like, in college uh-huh. were all the crunchiest granola-y hippies. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. right. And now it's, like, right-wing Dockers guys. Well, and the, those two groups have sort of merged no, as well. No, you're, you're totally right. Yeah, that, that, too, is like, yeah, that. Carter, tell them your name for it. Uh 
What? what for? Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> for wait. when uh, the QAnon to yoga pipeline. <laughs> QAnon to yoga pipeline? Oh, man. What is my name for uh, it? <laughs> Carter has a name for it. It's uh, Sage Against the Machine. Oh, Sage ah. Against the Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. Sage Against Beautiful. the Machine. That's, that's it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is it exactly. A yoga pose to, to uh, yeah, block out the uh, advice to get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's like, it's also like, like uh, formats, like, like our segment on our show, like uh, YouTube comment sections, Facebook, like anything that like the current generation has deemed uncool has become like this like breeding ground for like uh, uh, brain worms. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Perhaps that's why they've left. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think so. Uh, yeah. All of our parents well, are being assholes w- on it. Not uh, my parents specifically. My mom's been pretty cool. But yeah. yeah. yeah my, <laughs> but mine in is, general, our parents' yeah. generation. Yeah. My my dad's like viral on TikTok. He's he's. Oh, well, <laughs> oh yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, your dad's uh, doing a dance and listing ADHD <laughs> symptoms. <laughs> my dad mug bangs on TikTok. Oh wow. <laughs> I got one of those mukbang dads. Yeah, he just crams spaghetti in his mouth and he cries. <laughs> oh, a mukbang daddy. <laughs> mukbang daddy. I don't know. Leave I'm me not... alone when I'm having chicken sandwiches from I'm... every place in town. <laughs> I'm ashamed I forgot my Sage Against the Machine bit. Thank that you. Man, Thank you, good bit. I, we, Thank you. We named an episode after it. It was so good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, as as tempted as I am to say that, like, uh, Facebook is the, uh, you know, that's where all the crazy stuff is. There are children on TikTok uh, right now that believe there are giants. Okay. <laughs> they, they, there, oh, was really? a, there was a kid that, like, filmed, like, what looked to be an antenna or something on the side of a faraway mountain. It was just like, yo, dude, that's a giant. <laughs> and now there's a wow. whole TikTok giant it, community. It, it wasn't that that... Antenna is for a giant. It was yeah, the giant. It was the giant. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Uh, so we're not safe anywhere. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it. you know it's it's that old thing. It's like humanity. We were never meant to know more than like three hundred people. Sure. <laughs> right. And and if you think about that, that is the root of all of it. Is too much free time and just too many opinions. Uh, yeah. Too much like exposure it melting our brains constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Now that said, let us try to maximize the amount of people who uh, are are in line to purchase this comic because I want to talk about Archie. Yeah, yeah your sure. Work. It's yeah, fucking yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks. Congrats on that. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome, man. I um uh I was a you know I was a comic book kid. You'll be shocked to know that a man who got into podcasting <laughs> read a lot of comic books as a kid. Oh, I certainly can relate to. This. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a safe space. This is a safe <laughs> yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. comfortable. To be I feel totally comfortable. fucking basic. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. I um so the the Archie Corporation does kind of a cool uh, series called Archie Horror, where uh-huh. they take that you know that stable of characters. Archie, Jughead, Betty, Veronica, Moose and Midge, yeah. Reggie, the gang. Sure. And they put them into pretty fucked up horror scenarios. <laughs> it's okay. a really, really cool line. Um, you know, there's no, there's not a ton of continuity. People can just die in every issue. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I love it. And yeah, every issue kind of has a different horror theme. And the one I wrote for, uh, it's <laughs> called Pop's Chocolate Shop of Horrors. <laughs> and it is... Uh, like horror stories set in their diner. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I have one. There's two other writers who contributed, a bunch of cool artists. And, uh, yeah, it's fun. I, I was shocked at how, like, fucked up they let it be. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a blast. It comes out March uh, March 22nd. I think you can throw it on your pull list now. Yeah, I'm so ordering stuff. So you're a comic book uh, guy uh, before this. W- were you into Archie comics beforehand, or did you, like, familiar with the universe at least? Or? Yeah, I was. And so uh, I would say that the probably the Archie head in my family was my mom. My okay. Okay. Mom loved them, so we would like get them at the supermarket. Like, definitely, you know, they were like check out. Oh, the big treats. black and white. Uh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, like we would get those, and then kind of like later, I obviously graduated to, you know, it was the '90s, so a lot of Spider-Man, a lot of X-Men, right? Sure, right. Sure. Jim Lee type stuff. Big Marvel uh, fan. Yeah, love a yeah. Marvel. Spidey's kind of my guy. Okay. Um. Yeah. So yeah, th- so yeah, we definitely had a lot of Archie around uh, around the house growing up, and I'm uh, kind of a Riverdale. Guy. I was gonna say, are you I'm Riverdale? A Riverdale, guy. Riverdale guy. Yeah, okay. I got Riverdale peel- pilled recently. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I'm all about it. So. Well, hey, I mean, you're contributing to the universe. Why yeah, wouldn't you? you know? sure. I would, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. It's thrilled to be here. Yeah, yeah. that's gotta, awesome. Gotta watch the watch the product and stuff like that. You must. Yeah, sure. And sure. Uh, Sabrina comes out of that uh, universe yeah, as well. Yeah, I was right? really? that Sabrina. Yeah, so Sabrina's part of that. Josie and the Pussycats, also oh. part of that universe. Yeah. That I can see because the animation style is similar. I didn't know Sabrina. Yeah, the Teenage totally. Witch? The yeah. Teenage Witch? I yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I think maybe I probably <laughs> Probably, you know, had a time, you know, when I was like 11 or 12 or something where I would have like, you know, scoffed at kids comics. And I'm like, these uh-huh. are grown up comics where right. everyone dies and they're on drugs and... <laughs> 
Prime decapitates the KKK <laughs> in every issue. Uh, but yeah, but I think like when you get older and you kind of get over that stuff, you're like, hey, this is all like great, and there can be like goofball stuff, and there can be serious stuff, and yeah, uh, it's all comics and it's all fun. So, do you find like there's a correlation? I don't know why I'm drawing this parallel, but like, oh, sure. like uh, um, in, in terms of like a, you know like a, a stuff that you deem in like your tw- teens and early twenties or something is like that's for like that's like kids stuff, right? And then you like go for like the harder edged uh, subject matter, sure. But it's like the same thing maybe with like video games where you play like super violent video oh, yeah, games sure. uh, when you're like in your teens and twenties, and then like if you still play video games as an adult, you just want to play like Zelda and Mario and stuff. Yeah, like Yeah, no kidding. I mean, that's a yeah, that that is really interesting, and your jaws will hit the floor. Yeah, uh-huh. when I tell you. <laughs> That I also really like video. Games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, me too. <laughs> Who is this man? Who is this <laughs> enigma? <laughs> 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 Impossible <laughs> to pin down. I mean, Puzzle box. Yeah. I, I think we you... certainly aren't a nerd friendly <laughs> podcast. No, no, we are no. all jocks, as you can tell. Yeah, by yeah, this. yeah. We're doing sports right now. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sports is we the next five segments sports. of sports. <laughs> do sports. Yeah. Yes, sports are good. We yeah, all say do sports. But I, I think what you're describing is kind of that's just the symptom of childhood. When you're young, you long for complexity. And then when you're old, you long for simplicity. It's it's yeah, that, but like that's what that push and pull is. And here we are in our in our thirties, boys. Which way are we taking? Uh, <laughs> well, and the, and the 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 um, I guess it's like the the, and it's all I guess viewed through the eye of nostalgia or something. But like you know, in terms of like the video game thing, yeah, like playing like Mario or like um like Zelda, you those games are hard. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I guess like maybe like going back and looking at prop, you see like how complex properties were in the like it's. I guess it is to say it's hard to capture like the imagination of an adult and a child and it's not like right. it's not easier it's actually harder I would imagine. Yeah, when I think that just like you know nostalgia is one reason that we still like Mario but sure. like they're just well designed games. Yeah, I you like know? it right. because it's Chris Pratt doing the voice. Oh right. That's why <laughs> I, I only <laughs> got it to Mario when I heard it was Chris yeah, Pratt. Yeah, I'm just, I just like the Bob Hoskins movie. <laughs> I, I, just the Bob Hoskins John Leguizamo <laughs> that's movie. That's my Mario. <laughs> yeah. that's Not a, my Mario. That'd be a wild take. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's the only Mario I care about. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> yeah, Dennis uh, Hopper is the only who, who, uh, right. Koopa. Is he King uh, Koopa in that movie? Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I don't even think they call him Bowser. I think he is King Koopa. He's King Koopa. Yeah. I said this on the show before but super mario brothers was a turning point for me because i saw it in the theater and up until that i mean i was a child and yeah. up until that point all movies are good right it's popcorn there's slushies you're sitting in the dark you're watching a thing mm-hmm. all, movies, all are movies are good, are good. next is- movie you watch the piano yeah <laughs> <laughs> you see oh. Harvey Keitel's cock, and you're like, I feel this is complex. I feel like this movie is complex. But Super Mario Brothers was the first time I ever went to a movie. I was like, that sucked. Yeah, and I was like really? seven oh, or whatever. Can movies be bad. Yeah, it was. It was like a turning yeah. point. And yeah, and that was totally games too. It's like you got a video game so seldomly. You know, it's oh, like yeah. maybe you got one on your birthday. Maybe you got one for Christmas. Maybe like. You know, a kid who's moving away gives you one or something yeah. like that. And yard sales. Yeah, yard sales. I grew up in a college town, so we had lots oh, yeah. of Sega Genesis yeah. games galore. Used stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and like, if you if you got Snake Rattle and Roll or something, yeah. like a game in that caliber, <laughs> you just had to play it for six months because it was the game you were getting. Yeah. And like the idea that games can be bad was like... A realization for me. I'm like, oh, like I don't just have to sit and play a bad game until I get good at it. Like yeah. I can <laughs> and just get another one. Are, some are better than others. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like not just a pizza theory where it's like it's all kind of good. It's like right. so it can just yeah. be like I, waste of time. No, snake rattle and roll was bad. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've just never. I, I've I played video games as a kid. I never had the like keep going thing. Right. If it just sucked, I'm like, well, that uh, chalk that up to a loss or mm-hmm. more likely I was bad at it and it was hard. And so I quit yeah. because it was hard. I have like OCD, so it's hard for me to quit. Oh, yeah. yeah so I'll I'm, play like Redneck Rampage. I'm like, God, I hate this shit. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish it was over. When am I going to beat this? I have to 100% it too. I have, yeah, to yeah, exactly. the, I have to find all the secret trailers or whatever you find. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Find, find all the secret, you know, like uh, 2D, you know, play place cards or whatever yeah i I, I grew up with sega genesis i never had a super nintendo i just had sega and i remember going to kb toys and they had a sale where it was like if you bought these two games together they were 10 bucks each so it was 20 bucks for two games Mm. and one of them was a game that i played 
that day and then for years, and that was Zombies Ate My Neighbors, one of oh, my yeah. favorite fucking That's games ever. That's a really ever. fun game. The game's fun, yeah. LucasArts, like a great game. The other one, Rocket Knight Adventure, which I played. Oh, you're the possum. You're a possum you're dressed up as possum. like a knight, and I played it <laughs> once, and then it sat on my bookshelf for the next 20 years. Boy, I have fond memories of that game, too, but that could have been, I was a dumb kid and thought every game was good but yeah, i this is just purely me wonder, sucking at I it i wonder if that game is good <laughs> anyway I, I think i made it to the second level and it was right. like this is too hard <laughs> and then i just gave up and now please tweet at me and tell me i'm a fucking idiot because this game is easy yeah and, all the <laughs> rocket knight stands yeah. are gonna yeah. be oh, in yeah. your mentions <laughs> hey hey and i got harsh opinions about green dog the beach surfer dude too. oh yeah sure yeah. <laughs> and pitfall was way fucking harder than it should have been on Sega pitfall's Genesis. hard yeah. pitfall's hard <laughs> It's so. very frustrating. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we mentioned uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, yes. and uh, so it's now time for our Witch's Brew, our ungodly concoction yeah, this nice week. Nice segue. Oh, <laughs> very look at good that. Who's doing And podcasts. it looks like shampoo. Uh, I know. Yeah, it's in a metal can like Bud Light. Uh, oh, is, yeah. Yeah. This, like is, a... this is what they give uh, people at biker rallies so they can't break uh, bo- glass bottles and stab one another. The metal can. Uh, uh, it's up time. <laughs> yeah, this is called up time and this one actually this is the last uh thing that i mailed to myself from alabama over christmas time so up, up time sounds like a <laughs> male enhancement pill you get at the gas station. it is yes this <laughs> is, is supposed it's to up do. time <laughs> this is chock full of horny goat weed oh <laughs> yeah oh well i guess most we'll turn our chairs to we'll all turn and face the it's wall when we all get boners yeah. <laughs> we will all turn our backs to each other this says, awaken the senses with a refreshing and sparkling blend of white peach, lemonade, and other natural flavors. Our exclusive blend of ingredients will help you perform your best uptime, how energy should feel. So maybe what? it is like a it boner d- pill. It does seem to have a su- suggestive <laughs> yeah, language yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Man, probably give it a can't legally Carter. say anything, but they're <laughs> right, like, right. <laughs> if you want to perform, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you at a high level, <laughs> <laughs> if you experience uptime for longer than eight hours, right. you should go to a hospital. <laughs> if you would like the director to suddenly cut to a train entering a tunnel in your <laughs> movie of your life, contains uh, no fruit juice. <laughs> of course not. It's pure chemical sludge. What uh, is the flavor supposed to be? It's white, white peach. Lemonade. Lemonade. Okay. That, that, sounds, a, that sounds kind of nice. That right. does sound kind of nice. And, and that was the last minute addition to that uh, package that I mailed out because uh, I was uh, I've got that in Notasolga, Alabama. Okay. Yeah. They do have uptime tablets. This is a mental, physical energy drink. <laughs> oh, okay, got tablets. Ooh, it uh, might be. Right. I can't drink this. I don't, I'm don't. i not have time to drink an uptime. I just need to swallow one dry. <laughs> yeah. no Let it dissolve in my throat. Is 150 calories. I always got to be, be looking. At Ooh, the that means it's got real sugar in it all right it does has cane sugar in it okay um <laughs> ginseng root extract yeah. horny goat weed <laughs> does it say horny goat weed no uh oh is that what that is oh yeah uh, inspection complete it, it's, <laughs> it's it doesn't seem as this, despite the implication that it will make you very horny it doesn't seem like it has as much dubious <laughs> stuff on it as most of these do no most of these are uh, like this chemical sludge uh children shouldn't be near it like that like this doesn't say any of that <laughs> right so. oh and do not get in eyes <laughs> you probably shouldn't get any drink in your eyes <laughs> it's like that mr show thing don't taunt right <laughs> time yeah. oh i think that's happy fun ball you're thinking happy oh, fun yeah, ball yeah. Happy fun ball. yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, oh, and uh, in the uh, grand tradition of most of these energy drinks, it is made very near the water. So if uh, the company needs to make an escape into international waters, they can. <laughs> this is made right here in Los Angeles. Oh, y'all. beautiful. Yes. Local. Yes, drink local. It, right? Well, <laughs> it was made here and think then went local. to Alabama and then okay. I sent it back here. What a uh, journey this so thing's I, been on. I know. This thing's been like <laughs> 4,000 miles at to, least. I used to have a real serious energy drink. Um, I don't want to say addiction. Maybe that's making light of actual addictions, but I really had an energy drink. Job, what what so was your poison? Kind of mm. tough to kick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I used to work at a TV network that's not around anymore called Fuel TV. Ooh, yeah. Okay. And they were action sports, you know. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so like, you know, skateboarding, <laughs> snowboarding, motocross. Sure. And so like, obviously that the energy drink business R- runs that industry, you know? Yeah, like, well, it's called Fuel. I assume that yeah. had a corresponding drink, did it not? Well, it didn't have its own drink, but like every, all of those companies would just send a guy every week 
and you had a little mini fridge in your office, and the guy from Rockstar or Monster or Red Bull or whatever oh, would yeah. just come and fill your fridge and leave. Just because, <laughs> you know, yeah, that was just like a professional courtesy that they did. <laughs> Here's wow. your fuel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was, I think I was, I was, you know, I didn't like like coffee yet. I like was yeah. late to coffee. Sure. So like to pep up, I would like just crack a monster. And oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it really got to the point where I would like salivate when I saw the logo and I was like, <laughs> my eye was twitching all the time. I really had it bad for these things. So anyway, so I have not had an energy drink in some time. Ooh, fantastic. I imagine like I'll have a just a flood of recovered memories. Of- <laughs> yeah, I was like, I hope this isn't. <laughs> Oh, it might not even be carbonated. Oh, it's not. I don't think. No, it's always it's a just bit. porridge. Oh, Gross. Well. All right, let's give it a. Oh yeah. Ooh, it's this. milky. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little. It's, it's milky. Got some, it's got some bubbles, right? Am yeah. I, it's got it's a It's milky few. upon the pour, and then it settles <laughs> into a. <laughs> There's a chance that the carbonation just, uh, you know, Ooh, went, it, went dead. It smells. <laughs> It, it smells, fucking smells. No, you know what? It smells like scrubbing bubbles. It smells yeah, like it the, the toilet cleaner. It smell like a urinal. I had it. I don't know if we were if we were supposed to just nose it first, but I had a sip. Oh yeah. Oh start. yeah. Yeah yeah. Okay, it is supposed to be carbonated, but the carbonation has turned inward somehow. I yeah. think the two cross country trips may have contributed <laughs> I to think that. So. Maybe on the plane. I think maybe got- the plane decompressed it somehow. Wow. Yeah. This Oof. is this is this is shit. This is shit. <laughs> I don't like this. I, don't like this. Sucks. I do not like this at all. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I am not having an uptime right now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> this is downtime. This needs some a- downtime. Yeah, Ugh. I need some downtime after this uptime. Yeah. That's uh. Yeah. Real chemically. Real uh. Like weird aftertaste oh, not getting boy. any white peach nor lemonade no i think no. i'm getting <laughs> pure clorox <laughs> yeah yeah i tried to I, yeah it, it, it clorox is is, is what it's like it tastes it's very bleachy um for something that is just has according to the can the most natural stuff yeah, yeah. it tastes the most chemically uh, yeah yeah like yeah. everything else we eat, <laughs> just tastes like candy and this, this tastes is, like shit it tastes like fabuloso <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this or tastes like detergent. Pine, pine salt. I mean, if I'm like remembering my time with these, like they're obviously best when they're just ice fucking cold. Yeah, yeah. Right. Maybe this, if it was like had been in the freezer for a little bit and we yeah. were having it over ice, it would be kind of refreshing. <laughs> but yeah, boy, room temp. This is this is real gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very Ooh. bad. Oh, shame on you, up time. I did look up there. Uh, it leaves a little, it leaves a, an aftertaste <laughs> on the palate too. Oh yeah, a yeah, very bitter. It lingers. After, it, it lingers. It's true. Linkers. I uh, I looked up Ugh. the zip code on there. Uh, anybody want to guess what part of LA they make this in? Uh, boy, let's see. I'm tasting maybe a little. I mean, <laughs> maybe tasting a little San Pedro. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. I know maybe not technically LA. Yeah, but yeah. Kinda like down by the docks. Uh, <laughs> it's. I would say this place has a down by the docks vibe, despite being nowhere near the water. What do you think, Art? Oh, with that hint. I mean, you know, I'm getting a, you know, I'm thinking this stuff's top of the line. This is, this is, uh, you know, this is Santa Clarita. Oh, no, no, y'all. This is Van Nuys Van all Nuys. the way. Yeah. Van Nuys. Shout out to the fucking San Fernando Valley, the only place where I've ever feared for my life at an open mic. Uh, <laughs> also, where me and Rivers used to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> also feared for my life there when we uh, moved, when they moved the business to behind a gym. Mm-hmm. What was the job? Uh, tour guides. Tour guides. So, okay. They we rented out an office space that was like right next to this like church, <laughs> like that was in an office space. Oh, oh Remember yeah, that? yeah. What yeah. were you giving tours of? Uh, well, Hollywood. That's, yeah, that's still my job. I do private tours of oh, LA. Cool. Yeah, pre-pandemic, Carter and I worked for uh, another tour company, not the one I work for now. Who, uh, yeah, he moved. <laughs> he moved his business to the basement of the Vons in Van Nuys. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> shout out to the Yoshinoya across the street. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> never, I never, never went there. Man, I was gonna say, I never, shout out. I never fuck with that Yoshinoya. <laughs> I, I've had Yoshinoya exactly once. It yeah. was last week. Oh, wow. Recently. <laughs> yeah, to go, I'm, I'm on a little podcast tour. I had it to go on the Doughboys. Oh, podcast. you were on the Doughboys. I was oh, on no the Doughboys. Oh, I uh, love the Doughboys. The Doughboys are the best. Oh, funniest funniest dudes in podcasting. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and yeah, I'd never been in a Yoshinoya just because like when you drive by one, it, it just always bums me out it's like yeah. the sign is always broken <laughs> there's always like someone in there with their head down on the table at the end of their rope yeah and yeah. oh yeah like going in there just seems like an ordeal 
and yeah, yeah. but it, it's so bright like the colors are so vibrant yeah. but it's, it somehow makes it sadder cuz there's one person in there it seems it's got like big flickering light uh, yeah, like yeah. energy but there's oh, it's it, got, they seem very ready for business it's got methadone clinic energy yeah yeah, yeah no kidding <laughs> the bathrooms are locked up tighter than like a fucking bank safe oh like, god it's, yeah. yeah it's it's yeah. very and, and i've i've eaten there once and they seem surprised <laughs> That I came in. That you were conscious. Yeah, yeah. It does seem like a front. It does seem like yes. it's, it's that episode of Breaking Bad where where he goes to the like vacuum repair dude. Oh, yeah. Who, like yeah. Robert Forster. Yeah, yeah, who like disappears you, yeah. and, like, takes you, uh, yeah, you to a cabin. You order the number six. And then, right, exactly. And then all someone of a sudden, throws you in a van and takes yeah. you to You're in New <laughs> Hampshire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and not, not to reference too much of the podcast you were just on, but yeah. I remember from the previous Yoshinoya episode uh, on Dubwise, they're talking about how old Yoshinoya is. Oh, oh, it's I don't I don't think we got into like the corporate history of it. I didn't. It's, it's, I mean, I think we it did come up that like in Japan they are kind of beloved and maybe yeah. are better and it's a different kind of caliber of food. But we have some sort of weird American version <laughs> that yeah uh, sucks. Dude, Art, yeah, Yoshinoya opened up in eighteen ninety nine. That's what oh I'm saying. God. It's like it's it's like ancient. <laughs> William McKinley was the president when that <laughs> yeah, opened. Yeah, dude. Holy shit, that rules. Well, yes, obviously very impressive to be a restaurant for that long. And perhaps in uh, Japan they are a treat. But oh uh, yeah, the sure. Yoshinoya that I had was awful. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. It was it's so really bad. Slimy, cheap so though. Sli- it, it, <laughs> can't argue with that. It is food. It is technically <laughs> yes. food. Yeah, I think if yeah, I mean I think if you need something like fast and quick, it's there. You can like yeah. get a vegetable in it. Which yeah, yeah, is, yeah. You know, more than you can say for some other like most American like restaurants. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you know, I, I think I think it has its place. And yeah. I understand why it has sure. its fans. But yeah. It was a very unpleasant experience. Uh, yeah, it will sustain. If you're starving, it'll sustain you until like the four hours until you vomit it back. Yeah, up. I'll I'll tell you why I've never been there. Two reasons. One, the league. Uh, <laughs> there's a whole episode of the TV show The League where you, uh, they call it Yobagoya in the show, but it's obviously supposed right. to be Oshinoya and it gives everyone diarrhea. So I'm just like, no. The other reason is that the Oshinoya closest to my house is also next to a place that has dollar pupusas. It's like a pretty oh, yeah, good sure. Salvadoran spot. And I'm just like, if I'm getting cheap shit, I'll get like, right. you know, six pupusas and be good for the week. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's so. no, no, no contest there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, God, this energy drink is not sitting well. No, <laughs> be very bad. <laughs> uh, Normally I, Rivers is the only one that does it, but I slammed all of it, too. I don't know why I know, did that. I mean, I just need a little, need a little pep. Hey, you step. know, sometimes it's functional. Sometimes yeah. You, just, you know, you got to take your medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's Archie. Archie's here. Betty's here. Veronica, too. Reggie's here. And here comes Jughead and Hot Dog, too. So everything's Archie. Come on, let's go with the Archie Show. I have a story I wanted to share with y'all. This is uh, BBC News. Uh, This is written by Kelly Ng. And, you know, uh, there's many places where you could maybe get meditative about things in your life uh, that are bothering you. For instance, Aaron Rodgers uh, just went to a darkness retreat. (laughs) that I found out about. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it like a whole, like, it's okay that you're not vaccinated retreat? Or? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one has to, this is more sage against the machine, for sure. But yeah, yeah. yeah it was reported that uh, he was in Southern Just Oregon. more sage against the machine. <laughs> he was in Southern Oregon uh, in what it amounts to a hobbit hole uh, oh, where wow. you just are in the dark room for four days. And you're supposed to just be in there without your phone, just thinking about stuff. Oh gosh, I'm like, like a nightmare. I think that just drives That's you like crazy. That's like prison punishment. That's like being in the hole. Yeah, and he yeah. was and he was paying like a couple grand to do it. Yeah, too, so. wild. Also, that whoever is arranging that is just like fleecing rich people, like <laughs> fleecing rich kooks. You're like, uh, yes, this is a very, this is a, a well, this is hole is designed for this. It's, I only go into this hole. Don't do your own hole. <laughs> yeah, that's no, the no. other thing. It's like just go in your room. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? If you <laughs> can I have some running water, there? that would be a sensory deprivation tank. That's yeah. not this. This right. is a this quiet is a hole. hole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I found this one. Uh, this is sort of along the same lines. I found this interesting. So again, Kelly Ng right for BBC. There was a time when Don slept fitfully and would be up in the wee hours to monitor prices in his portfolio balance. Don was pouring up to $200,000 every week into crypto trades. Uh, and so uh, this is his quote. 
I'd break into a sweat before going on long flights because I wouldn't be able to access the internet, he said. Don works in a company that processes central bank digital currency transactions in London, and he did not want to use his real name and wishes to remain anonymous because he fears his comments could spark a backlash from investors. He says that he went on a quote-unquote downward spiral in the middle of 2022, and that's when he decided to seek help. Wait, so who is Don? Don is a man that is about to go to rehab for crypto. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, if you're on a plane and you want it, just fucking spend the 15 bucks right. for the go-go yeah. in-flight I, Wi-Fi that doesn't work that good. I, you know, <laughs> I, mean, some, I think some flights it's even provided now. Uh, it's uh, not even, I you was, don't even have to pay. I was going to say, you know, uh, where it's only six bucks, Spirit Airlines, that's right, six dollars. Six dollar uh, internet? Six dollar yeah. internet on Spirit, yeah. Yeah, you're sitting on a wooden plank, but hey, you can at least look at Facebook. <laughs> I mean, for three hours or whatever, for yeah. domestic fl- I don't know why I've been so discouraged against Spirit Airlines. Oh, like, it's a hellish experience. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I ride hard for Spirit. If you're, uh, if, oh, well, if you're, you're a Spirit stand, okay. If, if you roll solo and you don't have a family and you don't need anything other than a backpack, it's great. If you are that very specific person, i.e. Right. me, uh, it's I know, fine. I like to try and like, if I'm just doing a weekend trip, I like to just bring the backpack. I like, mm-hmm. that's like a challenge <laughs> that I like to like present myself. Yeah. Uh, it's like there's got to be a Target in the area nearby if yeah, you actually need exactly. something. Exactly. If you miss something, you hit up the Walmart, you're fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is the status? Where are we at yeah, so, with crypto? So Don, Don is seeking help, okay. and he says the solution came in the form of a four-week stay at The Balance, oh, a sprawling rehabilitation <laughs> the center. Balance hole. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the balance hole. <laughs> Get in the balance hole and shut up. Uh, it is a uh, rehabilitation center with dozens of staff on the Spanish island of Mallorca. So isn't that nice that he gets to go for four weeks to one of the most beautiful places right. in the world so he can't deal fake money anymore. So Don lived in a private villa and was attended to by his own butler and chef. His uh, treatment comprised of therapy uh, and also massages, yoga, bike ride, all for the low, low price of $75,000. So no hole. No hole. No <laughs> hole for this one. Uh, no quiet hole. Okay. No quiet hole. Uh, founded in Zurich with properties in London and Mallorca, The Balance describes itself as a, quote, safe space enabling health and fulfillment. The landing page has pictures of beachfront villas, spas, and glowing testimonials from past clients. The center lists treatment programs for anxiety. The punishment has to fit the crime. <laughs> anxiety, burnout, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and eating disorder. Don says it helped him wean off crypto. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> by spending real money on yes, right. bike rides and shit. He's like, yeah, it's <laughs> funny. It's like if Don's a crypto guy, does he have 75000 bucks to blow at this point? <laughs> this is where you find out if that portfolio right, yeah. can turn into fiat or not. Um, so the pandemic and a volatile crypto market have spurred trade- a trading frenzy in digital currencies. And now luxury rehab centers are popping up around the world promising to treat crypto addiction. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what other addictions does <laughs> do these luxury centers cure you of? Marvel Ooh. Snap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> too much Marvel Snap. <laughs> too into your discard deck. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dessert addiction. Yeah, mm-hmm. Fruit Ninja. <laughs> Let's see. What are other fake stuff that I got into? <laughs> <laughs> Lego Star Wars. I liked that one a lot. <laughs> Excessive uh, pruning from being in a luxury pool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Massage <So>. addiction. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expensive one, yeah, too. Sure. Iron poisoning from spitting gold coins out of your mouth like <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. <Right. laughs> uh, the BBC has found that most of the rehab centers appear to be of the luxe variety and also offer treatment for other addictions, narcotics, alcohol, and eating disorders. Three rehab centers and two addiction clinics the BBC contacted said that they have received hundreds hundreds of related queries in the past two years, but addiction experts are skeptical whether crypto trading warrants such an exorbitant intervention. Quote, the treatment for crypto addiction is similar to other addictions. It says Annie Limke, a psychiatry professor at Stanford, and uh, she says it is a biopsychosocial disease. (laughs) Oh my God. <laughs> wow. uh, so it requires a biopsychosocial intervention. Experts like her argue that, that it's sense. akin to gambling and should be treated as such, which I'm like, yep, bingo, there it is. Are we also. Can you also go here for NFT addiction? (laughs) (laughs) You have too many bad monkey (laughs) chips. Guy just comes in scratching. I got too many bored apes. Yeah. Yeah. I bought. I was the first guy to buy that Kings of Leon album as a non fungible token. Oh my God. <laughs> that's sad that that's where I found out about NFTs. Was I was listening to some 
podcast where they were making fun of the Kings of Leon for releasing their album as an NFT, and I was like, what is that? Is it like a cl- uh, one of their classic albums, or is it No, it like- was like their newest one, I think. So you could just, like, w- is it like a... Uh, Wait a minute. When that guy bought the one Wu-Tang album and yeah. put it away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but they- that was a physical oh, album. <laughs> the Martin, the... the, the Shkreli. Martin Shkreli, Shkreli, that yeah. shitty guy? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm misunderstanding. So the Kings of Leon, instead of putting out an album, they made an, an ape with <laughs> wearing <laughs> they, their clothes? Like, no, I don't they, understand. They made the album itself was like an NFT. So instead of paying money, I guess, or uh-huh. instead of buying a physical copy of the album, you would buy like an NFT of the album cover and then I guess they would send it to you. I don't know. It was funny because it was very wow. like I reference this bit all the time. But it's it's one of those things like the, the older I get, the more it's true. And there was a bit where Lewis Black was saying, you know, sometimes somebody will come up to you with something so ridiculous. They'll be like, oh, my God, there's a bear just shitting everywhere. And you're like, I haven't seen a bear. And then next week, the bear move is moving into your house. Right. <laughs> and it was very much that with NFTs. I was like, man, Kings of Leon's dumb. And then five seconds later, it was fucking everywhere. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah it, is, it is. I don't think I know anyone who is currently doing it. But I think I knew some guys who were kind of in on it earlier and made a little bit of money. And yeah, uh, <laughs> but I think they've all thankfully gotten out but, oh god um, yeah but yeah i think if you could have been into it in that little pocket where you're like I, yeah i don't think this is the future i will try and make a little money from this and then yeah. bail all like, right right probably that was that was probably smart <laughs> yeah hey more power to them if they could see the potential in it and then dip out yeah, of it the no, right time I'm, I'm i'm definitely jealous they i didn't have to I... go to barbados to get cured of their <laughs> nft <Right>. addiction <laughs> <laughs> didn't have to get stuffed into a hole with aaron Rodgers. <laughs> uh sorry we double booked the hole this uh <laughs> nft addict's gonna be coming in here with you um <laughs> you think you're like are you aaron Rodgers? he just holds a finger to his mouth <laughs> <laughs> Quiet hole, just, just slowly puts the, the helmet on yeah <laughs> I'm not vaxxed. (laughs) (laughs) For anything. Um, uh, Check, please. (laughs) It says, uh, those who are addicted to crypto trading start increasingly turning to it as a source of excitement and pleasure in their lives, says Aaron Sternlicht, who runs New York-based family addiction specialist Mm. with his wife, Lynn. He says... Gambling. He says, yeah, that's what he says. He says, the telltale signs of crypto addiction include lying, stealing, debt, not being able to sleep, or even relax. Being thrown out of a moving van. (laughs) (laughs) buy an ape a bored ape Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh, buy home recording studio to record rock (laughs) opera he says Don sought options for treatment when his girlfriend broke up with him after she realized the extensive losses that he'd racked up during the crypto downturn in 2022 so yeah this guy just bet it all on crypto and then his his wife left him story as old as time yeah (laughs) we've all been there Crypto addicts often need help setting boundaries such as time limits for trading and stop loss limits, orders with instructions to close out a position when it reaches a certain price to guard investors against excessive losses. This is the the last quote from Don here is great. It was only when my children came to stay with me over Christmas that I realized how erratic I'd become. I was hostile towards them and they were worried that I was (laughs) sleeping for days at a time. (laughs) Well, yeah. at least he's realizing it, I guess. Uh, there's, I guess yeah. there's hope for crypto addicts if Don yeah. can become self-aware like this. And yeah. <laughs> he says, yet all the while, none of us thought that my crypto trading was part of the problem. Yeah. And I just love that the shining is happening at this guy's house, but instead of <laughs> all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, it's just diamond hands and rocket ships and oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> just emojis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that was what I woke up to this morning was like oh people need a uh, rehab for crypto we're in a good spot now <laughs> i think <laughs> that's the thing as they always say with the gold rush you don't get rich on the mines you get rich if you're the guy selling shovels and pans right yeah yeah like, so what's the crypto version of that i wonder i think it's rehab yeah maybe it is <laughs> yeah, yeah I think this it's is gotta the, be the cottage industry of, uh, of crypto rehab yeah i guess if yeah. you can draw apes yeah then- yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. If you could draw apes or if you can dig a hole and convince someone to stay in it. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) If that's if you can be the P.T. Barnum in this scenario. I mean, yeah. If you just tell people that's the treatment for uh, crypto addiction is darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, (laughs) that guy in Oregon's got it figured out. He doesn't have to pay rent on a giant facility in Mallorca. Yeah, yeah. Didn't have to have bikes yeah. for everybody. Yeah, and, just dig uh, a hole in, yeah. in southern just Oregon. Some version of Time Out, whether it's a hole in the ground or it's Barbados. <laughs> don't work for him, boy. It's like selling soul. 
walk away and I'll leave you way down in a hole. We have a segment on this show where we talk about our guests' hometown. Mm-hmm. So let us now get in the proverbial car, take a trip down the five freeway to. <laughs> Orange County, California. I was making a noise for the proverbial. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I guess the proverbial, so it probably doesn't make a noise. Oh, well, so. we, should, we should be motorcycles. We'll all do okay. it. Yeah. Hell yeah. Get your motor running. Uh, <laughs> wow. But uh, Jordan Hales from Mission Viejo, California. Yeah, that's right. So I was born in Beaumont, Texas. We oh, okay. To, oh. We moved to Mission Viejo, which is in Orange County, when I was like three. So okay. I really consider that where I grew up. We went sure. to like. Beaumont for family trips and stuff like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Uh, grew up in Orange County. Um, yeah, there you go. It, uh, <laughs> I, it, it's a, Now it's a pretty wacko QAnon place. Oh, yeah, yeah. This uh, Viejo is? Uh, uh, you know, Orange, Orange County. County specifically. Huntington oh. Beach, I think, where my mom lives now. My mom, thankfully, as I alluded to earlier, is not, uh-huh. it's a very nice, reasonable person with very good political beliefs. Uh-huh. Uh, but Wonderful. Huntington Beach, where she lives, is kind of like where the QAnon wackos would hold all Fuck, their yeah. rallies and stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I don't yeah. know how hot that bed is these days. Oh, but, very um, hot. Yeah, they had the whole thing where like they put up a pride flag in June and there was some lady oh, on TikTok no. standing in front of it being like, what is this? And you're like, it's June. What the fuck? It, right. It's every June for your whole life. Yeah. So like it's California, you know, so obviously, uh, you know, uh, it has nice people who would put up a pride flag, but also <laughs> right, uh, right. has become a little bit of a weird melting, <laughs> melting pot for those weirdos. Um, uh-huh. yeah. uh, but, you know, when I was growing up there, it was just a lot of ska. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> a lot of ska. I was I was looking up things about uh, Mission Viejo and uh, yeah, what are the facts about it? Okay, it's pretty nondescript. It's, it's, it's a, a it's a like a it's like a nice newish suburb. Yeah, um, yeah. it doesn't have a lot of uh, it, it, characteristics. Yeah, so the uh, the place I found out was founded by a guy who called himself. Don Juan Forster, okay, who was born in England as just John Forster, oh boy, and moved okay. to Mexico and was like, "I am Don Juan," right, <laughs> and <laughs> bought up Mission, what became Mission oh Viejo, gosh. and uh, basically has the same story as like Hill Valley from Back to the Future, where okay. it's like a guy was like, "I'm going to make a town here," and then he did. Uh, <laughs> cool, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the the notable things I found out about it: the cycling road race portion of the 1984 Olympics was held there. Okay. Quentin Rampage Jackson lived there at some point. The town's website still claims him, even though he's from Memphis and now lives in Irvine. (laughs) So if you go to the... Rampage you, Jackson still lives there? Uh, no, he doesn't. But if you uh, go to Mission Viejo's website, it's like famous people, and you click it, it's like Rampage Jackson and lived here once, but not now. Some at, undetermined time lived here, and now right. he lives a few towns over in Irvine. And uh, <laughs> never forget on Tough Enough where he kept calling that guy Big Titties. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed that one of the fighters, he was kind of go, you know, fat, pudgy guy, like a heavyweight, and he had some titties. You know, I'm gonna win it, though. Right? They don't win none titties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that got him that role on the 18. Movie. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. He did. They did try and make him a movie star for a they while. They did. They oh, tried yeah. to make him Mr. T in uh on the AT movie. Oh, I think yeah. he kept call, he kept calling Charlotte Copley big titties <laughs> on that on the set, and he, <laughs> he kind of derailed his career. Uh, it was also the place where the freeway killer Randy Kraft was finally caught in 1983 after oh. 16 mm. murders. Uh, I mean, this is great. I'm I'm learning a lot. And uh, last but not least, the Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, convicted of 13 murders. Uh, his last attempt. <laughs> to kill somebody. He tried to kill a couple there really? and failed. Oh my and gosh. Uh, the lady who he didn't kill saw his car and that helped lead to his arrest. In Mission Viejo. In Mission Viejo. That what was... a fun sorted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I was like, you know, when, when you when you let me know about this segment, I'm like, okay, like Mission Viejo, not a lot of, you know, stuff to mention, but this is all great. They don't even have festivals. I was thinking like, oh, maybe they got like a, a town like Strawberry a, Fest. Lemon Fest. Festival, uh, yeah, something. No, sure. uh, they uh, used to have a Halloween uh, haunted house that ended in 2021. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Mission Viejo for you. A nice place to grow up, uh, that, but but yes, not a lot of things worth mentioning. Yeah, yeah. Well, that. Well, uh, well you mentioned ska. Yeah. Did oh, you used to go to ska shows when oh, you were? Kid? Yeah. So I went to high school in like 1996. I started uh, high school in 1996. So like that, you know, the third wave ska was like. 
uh, it wasn't a punchline yet. It was still like it was ongoing. It, it was, was ongoing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it. Um, I think it's also kind of Scott. Sorry, to, I think it's also had this kind of resurgence of being like a yeah. fun, purely fun yeah. kind of music, like harmless. Yeah. No, uh, I think I think we're in a good place with ska as a culture. Yeah, as yeah. a culture. Yeah. I think maybe we're realizing that we were a little hard on it. That right. It was <laughs> yeah. Fun. There was some good musicianship. Some of it was more. <laughs> Serious than it got credit for, yeah, uh-huh. and uh, that you know, I think, I think, I think the pylon was like harsher than it deserved. Yeah, so, and I yeah. think now people are like, hey, there's some good, there's some good ska, there's some new, good new ska bands. Some of the old ones are still putting out good music. So yeah. I think, I think we've course corrected, and I think hopefully, hopefully we can all enjoy. I feel, nice. I feel like we were, sure. we were, everybody was like right on that wave of acceptance of ska, and then Mighty Mighty Boston's made their song about George Floyd. <laughs> Everybody Gosh. was like, "Oh no, oh, man!" No. I can talk about that mighty, mighty boss. That what's going on with them for forever? Oh, it's fucking nuts. It's old. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a ride. Mean, he's uh, the uh, the main the singer wouldn't get vaccinated. Dick, and oh, Dicky Bats won't do. Yeah. Uh, Dicky Bats. Oh, you hate <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> so you know, they, uh, I would say that that album that has the unfortunate George Floyd song on it, which is not, uh-huh. which is which the song's heart is in the right place. Yeah, it is. But it you're is just not, like. Boy, you're the wrong messenger yeah, for this message. No kidding. Oh. But I think that album is very good. Is it good? Okay. And I All listen right. to okay. it. I'm like, hey, these guys still got it. <laughs> you know, cringy George Floyd song aside. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Just leave that one off the playlist. Yeah, you know, that could be a Japan only B side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, a real uh, a real shame. They they broke up soon after because the lead singer would not get vaccinated. You know, so mm, uh, uh, maybe some more problems. And now he has a gosh, he's st- he's he announced some sort of super group with other guys who were kicked out of bands because they wouldn't get oh, vaccinated. Wow. Steve Harwell from Smash Mouth. No, oh gosh, someone from Smash Mouth though, <laughs> not the lead singer, the uh, the drummer from Offspring who got kicked off. And so they have a band, and it's called something. The lead singer from Trapped. The, <laughs> the Harbingers of Doom. What do you mean? It's something like that. It's something. The bringers of disease. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, yeah patient zeros. The plague bodies <laughs> catapulted over a wall. And they have a. There's a little like teaser. Maybe they've released more <laughs> since I looked into this, but they have a little teaser for their album. Oh God. And it has a little snippet of music and kind of this montage of all of their faces. Oh. And I think oh, what boy. they're going for with the face it's all they're all black and white so it's like with the beatles but diseased <laughs> yeah a little bit a little bit and what they're going for is like grizzled veterans they all yeah. look sickly they all look fucking yeah. gaunt and bad yeah. and it's like oh we all know what this band is and you yeah. picked the most disease ridden looking photo of <laughs> right, yourself right, right. <laughs> it's wild it makes you... them look even more cadaverous yeah, than... yeah. yeah like you're already <laughs> old guys playing punk rock hey. like you know you're already guys in your 50s who are starting a new punk band yeah. and like for, for them to look that disgusting yeah. in the photos it's just, just like, like Sturgis South Dakota we can't wait to come and give you guys COVID at yeah, the punk no rally yeah no kidding that is Woo! absolutely where you're gonna catch them next uh, so <laughs> So, so okay, so we're so, patient zero, right? <laughs> so, there, but there was fun ska shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, that's a very fun time in my in my life. I I went to you know let's see all those bands. Uh, you know, pre wacko boss tones. Uh, uh-huh. You know, your 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 less than Jakes, your Safe Ferris's, your Slackers, sure. all the all those bands. Sure. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Less, less than Jake's from Michigan, or they just come back no. through there? Uh, they're from Gainesville, I believe. Gainesville, that's right. Yeah. They're from Florida. Gainesville. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we had a lot of bands from Mission Viejo, but yeah. from, from, you know, from your Fuller Tens. Yeah, and sure. And your Costa Mesa. Oh, you yeah, had yeah. Some, you know, you got social, did, like, social Goldfinger D. come through there, or any of those bands? Yeah, I saw Goldfinger a bunch. Um, and yeah, Social Distortion was definitely <laughs> not a ska band, but yeah, a, yeah. a, a country-tinged punk band. Yeah. They were absolutely the pride of Orange County. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every dude had that the skeleton smoking, with... Smoking with the martini thing. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. the smoking skeleton tattoo. Oh. That was a big neck tattoo. <laughs> Friend of the show, Kyle Clark. He's got that on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Friend of the show, Mike Ness. <laughs> yeah, friend of the show, friend Mike, the show Ness. Mike Ness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's he's downstairs playing doo-wop music right now. <laughs> he's, out there, he's downstairs playing Doom. Yeah. He's downstairs <laughs> playing Doom on his Switch. Yeah. <laughs> but what? yeah, I, I you know, so I was looking up stuff about Mission Video, yeah, but and now we're turning to a local. Uh so yeah. run through these. Uh first question, Jordan Morris, local legend. 
I would say that my neighborhood local legend, we didn't really have any celebrities. I think at 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 some point the guy who hosted Blind Date lived in Orange County. His name was oh. Roger Lodge. And he hosted <laughs> Roger Lodge. Raj Lodge. Yeah, Raj Lodge. And he um he hosted Blind Date. So I think he lived in Orange County, but our like local yokel that we all loved was a guy named David Plotkin who was <laughs> Halloween dad. He was the like, I'm turning the house uh-huh. into a fucking haunted house yeah. for Halloween. Yeah. He dressed up as Dracula. Wait, his last name was Plotkin? Yeah. That's so close to Pumpkin. I love that. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think <laughs> about that. almost David has pumpkins. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. I've, n- I've never thought of that. But yeah, he was like the Halloween dad. And it's funny you mentioned it having a prominent haunted house until, you know, two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah, he like, he like went all out and yeah, yeah really kind of like inspired other dads in the neighborhood to like give it a shot but nobody did it like Plotkin yeah nobody did it like Plotkin uh yeah and that was my first like exposure to like a horror adult yeah yeah you know like Mm -hmm. was there a maybe a competing Christmas house somewhere where they were just like all right we'll take Plotkin's idea from Halloween and just make it Christmassy yeah there was some definitely some streets that did like bigger Christmas displays but yeah nobody did it like you know it was like they did the whole house, and you would like walk through their house and like, uh-huh. experience community theater style. Oh frights. yeah! Oh, I love that. <laughs> I think at one point he had the thing where you like take the chain off the chainsaw, so it makes the noise. But yeah, it's not, you right. know. But it, and so they, you know, he would run at you with the chainsaw, but it was just on. Uh, I love it. Yeah. So that was our. He was he was the fucking coolest. I like just wanted wanted him to be my dad, and I wanted him to like. <laughs> <laughs> as a little mummy for Halloween and follow him around. So. Would he drop like the three hundred dollars on like the full size mummy that has like the audio track with it that has like the light up? Oh, eyes? totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any like you party know, city. party city yeah. uh, Halloween <laughs> item uh, was in there, and yeah, it was all like very store bought. You know, uh-huh. I feel like it, there's some Halloween dads in LA that like work in the special effects industry. Oh, sure. yeah. So like when you go to Halloween dad's house out here, like you'll s- see some actual special effects. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you will actually be haunted by the devil. But yeah, for, <laughs> that us, realistic. for us, <laughs> yeah, that it real. was just like what could be bought at party city. So it was right, all right. very store bought. Sure, um, sure. I don't remember there being any like ingenious original art. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Rick Baker, the thing. No. Level. Yes. <laughs> yes. Rick Baker was not helping out. Uh, uh, Tom Savini didn't drop by uh, to do uh, to do gore effects, but uh, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just like it was just cool, and I think I like as a kid, it was like, oh yeah, there can be fun adults. Fun adults can exist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, second question: Worst bar. So our neighborhood dive was on Bar Rescue. If so, if with John can, can Taffer, you Google hell yeah. Mission Viejo <laughs> Bar Rescue. Yes. John Taffer, I think, a problematic fave at this point. has revealed oh, yeah. himself to be kind of a Trump wacko. But um, Makes sense. As he, far as, uh, he, you know, kind <laughs> of addictive reality TV. I loved that show for he, a while. He does look like a hemorrhoid. <laughs> he sure does. A hemorrhoid who owns one sport coat. <laughs> a hemorrhoid who screams about cheese sticks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there was a, yeah, so one of our, our like, local dump, got rehabbed on Bar Rescue, mm. and there were, and I, if I remember the episode correctly, the sticking point, or the thing that Taffer had to, like, correct, was that they, there was a drinking club of, like, punk guys <laughs> who were like, we're a drinking club, and they all it had... Was, it was the band Lit. <laughs> yeah, I, they basically all looked like they were in Lit, <laughs> and they would come in and just, like, act like fucking assholes. And okay. it was like... <laughs> so it was Lit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they had to, like... And, and the guys in the show were just such quintessential Orange County dickheads. Like, <laughs> they kind of dressed punk, but you could kind of... Like, they didn't really care about it. They just kind of, like, liked the social distortion logo. Sure. Um, and, like... <laughs> they liked having, like, shirts with flames on the side yeah. of them. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Anyway, I forget, I, like what that place is, I forget what it was called, but it was always like there was always like shitheads hanging out outside. And yeah, I was a pretty like good kid, so I definitely didn't have the point in high school where I'm like, oh, here's the bar that doesn't card. You yeah, know? yeah. I yeah. was like, I was a goody two shoes. But um, when I think of our like shitty bars, 
that one comes to mind. Okay. Does it feel good to like if to know that John Taffer was like, "There's roaches, there's roaches right there." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's still around. I wonder. I mean, usually those bar rescue bars close. Yeah. 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 They like stay open for two weeks after the show, and then they just can't right. Maintain or it. by the time the show comes out, it's just been closed. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 I can't really uh, can't really find of it. There is uh, apparently a, there is apparently a place in Laguna Niguel called Regional Treatment Plant. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. You are your own. <laughs> worst enemy okay <laughs> wait it is just a oh uh, wait so when you look up bar rescue for orange county it just gives you an actual treatment plant like, <laughs> like as if they came here um i believe it's called on the rocks oh on okay the rocks. On, the rocks. on the rocks ah there we go uh yeah i don't know if it's still there um if it is maybe i should go <laughs> the next time i visit my mom uh but yeah that was our that was our like local dump that nice. achieved a little bit of fame uh <laughs> third question best local food Okay, so when I saw this question, uh, around the same strip mall where you would find On the Rocks, you would find an adjacent strip mall that had a place called Albert Tacos. Okay. It was a Mexican, it was a great, just little neighborhood Mexican joint, uh, you know, a couple of seats, it was more of a takeout place. Uh -huh. And I think, I think you'll see this in LA too a little bit, but like, you know how like in New York, there's a lot of Ray's Pizza Mm -hmm. So there's and, yeah. they're, and they're not all related. It's just like right. at, well, at like, some point, it's like Tommy's out here. Yes, right. exactly. So there's, there's a, Tommy's Burgers yeah. and like Tommy's. And, yeah, and then Tom's Tommy's with like three M's for some reason. Tom's number yeah. five yeah. or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. So I think that in Orange County there was something. Uh, there was that sort of phenomenon around a Mexican food place that was named Alberto's. Okay. So yes. you had Alberts. <laughs> so you had Albert Tacos, which is the one I liked. And Wait, then is you that had Albert Tacos one Albert word? Albert Tacos, one word. <laughs> but there's also Fuck Albert you, Tacos, right? <laughs> two words. <laughs> and the one I loved was Albert Tacos, and it was just great, and it was the first place I had carne asada fries. And, oh, wow. And it wasn't Ooh. on the menu. Oh, yeah. But I remember going with my buddy Ryan Christian and him saying, like, if you order carne carne asada fries they'll give you carne asada on top of fries mm -hmm. and it being like the greatest meal of my gonna life say, that's so the, the same i mean i have so little nice things to say about san diego but boy they did give the world carne asada fries I, uh, they sure supposedly did. i was recently 20 i was in oceanside california for a wedding oh, yeah. uh -huh. um and there's an alberto's right across from our our hotel so i guess it, it, this is like what you're talking so this is not the same yeah. they're just a, an offshoot or they're oh you know back there there's some families just like fuck you oh no right. fuck you and they split and then they split yeah. and they split it's like it's uh -huh. like how every barbecue place in austin it's like a barbecue mafia where they're all cousins right. and they uh -huh. all are they feuding all hate each other it's yeah it's the like, rub is slightly different yeah, yeah, yeah right yeah. hatfields and mccoy's original smoke pit uh, so yeah, I, that's interesting. I would be uh, that might be a fun <laughs> podcast series of limited interest of like <laughs> trying all the Albertos. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'd be so game. Yeah, yeah I'd be so like, game. I would just want to know the backstory, you know? Right? When did the, it start? Yeah, yeah like, like how did that happen? Who's beefing yeah. with who? I checked out on Yelp. They did have a, a, a restaurant called Surfin Suvlaki, which okay. is like a Mediterranean place. And uh, mm. I was just kind of looking for uh, for stuff about Mission Viejo. And it is my favorite type of thing, which is on Yelp, every negative review, the owner comes in and writes like two pages yeah. unspaced Microsoft Word documents uh -huh. of just tearing them apart. Like someone was like, I came up with my dad and they were mean to me. And then mm -hmm. he was basically like, you didn't have a dad with you. You're a liar, bitch. I, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> You're the little shit with no dad. <laughs> You're an orphan. Oh, ne yeah. Never the best thing for a business to respond to the negative. At helps. great uh, length. Uh, uh, the, me and Carly were looking at this the other day. Very funny. Uh, therapists who respond to their negative Yelp oh, reviews. Oh, no. no. Incredible. Oh, Incredible. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's just like, a, it, and the person <laughs> is selling, is explaining completely why they were dropped as a client. Yeah. But they just should not jump in there. They just, just be like, hey, it's it, a therapist, man. You don't have to do that. This person goes, I wish I could speak to her mother and tell her how horrible a person she is. <laughs> oh my wish God. I could give her zero out of five. I'm appalled. I broke up because of her. Where My relationship is through. <laughs> and then the therapist responds, it seems you that you misunderstood what I said. I did not say break up. I said you had a conflict. I'm like, you should just yeah, let yeah. it be. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> fine. Oh, uh, God. Uh, question four, and this is pertinent to the, uh, the upcoming Archie Horror mm. comic. Local ghosts or monsters? Boy, not a ton. I would say that 
David Plotkin dressing up as Dracula. Yeah, <laughs> right. Was, yeah. Uh, the closest <laughs> thing to a local the most ghost. haunted element. <laughs> Randy Kraft, the serial killer. Local yeah, monster. but I guess yeah. No, I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know there's so much. I guess murders. according to your to your research, yeah, like <laughs> like uh, yeah, the the Night Stalker would yeah. qualify as a local monster. Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, you know, I think I think. It, it, it is a, a relatively new place. Mission right, Viejo right. has not been around a long time. For real? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it, it, it would be like weird if there was a ghost because <laughs> everything was built in 1986. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. I guess at this point, if someone died in like a mall in 1986, that ghost could haunt the mall. Yeah, yeah. yeah in 2023, sure. it's a 36 year old ghost. I was yeah. Say, <laughs> assuming the mall is still around. Yeah, so yeah. So, so many dead malls down there. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, no kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, we didn't have too many ghosts or monsters. Um, yeah, I would, I would be interested if, if you know, if for some reason after the show you kept digging into the history of Mission. Oh, I tried. We will. Yeah, I was trying. I really was because yeah, you're right. Like it was a place that you know. This uh, this fake English uh, Spanish Don owned, right. and then the population was zero until the '60s, and then they started building housing development. Yeah, there. totally wild. So yeah, yeah, it doesn't. I, I don't. I don't remember us having a local ghost or a monster. Okay. I wish. I wish we had a Jersey Devil or. A, I know, you know. right? Mm. Yeah. Oh. But, well, maybe that. Uh, maybe that fake English uh, Mexican land baron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea of like instead of it's never being like a yeah like a red you know a Jersey Devil there's the actual Night Stalker yeah Richard Ramirez that was our monster yeah. <laughs> it was oh, spooky. oh don't sleep on Randy Kraft man Randy Kraft killed more people okay yeah he was he was putting up bigger numbers he was sixteen <laughs> no. Night Stalker sorry, was only, I'm sorry I disrespected him Night Stalker <laughs> was a paltry thirteen yeah. come on um, and uh, finally number five favorite thing that's not there anymore. Oh, so uh, there was our mall arcade was part of a chain of arcades called Tilt. Ooh, I okay. think there's still one Tilt in West Covina, mm-hmm. um, but I loved the Tilt at the <laughs> Laguna Hills Mall. Okay, uh, first place I played Street Fighter. First place I played Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Did you have birthday parties there? Oh, good. Qu- no, I don't think it was a. I don't think it was like a. It was like a mall arcade, so it was just kind of like. A room with some games. Oh, okay. It didn't have like mm-hmm. a party room or anything like yeah. that. Not like a Dave and Buster's. No, not yeah, like yeah. a Dave and Buster's. Just a fucking kind of gross ass mall arcade. <laughs> I just, I just missed <laughs> ours, those. Ours. I, I want to say that we had one in the gallery in Birmingham. There was a tilt. I don't know if it, it, it did extend. That maybe not. If it didn't extend that far out I don't to know. the ours... maybe, and maybe it's an Alberto situation. Where right. You <laughs> your thing tilt. I guess, right. I guess the it gets the name of like when when your pinball ball gets stuck. Yeah. You could shake the machine, but if you shook it too much, too you would much get a it notice that said tilt. Oh, yeah. So right. that's where the name came from. So, yep. yeah, maybe you could just call anything tilt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh, Ours was called Aladdin's Castle. Okay. And mm-hmm. it was in the mall, and it also had... Their their party room was basically just a like a cordoned off area with one like two picnic tables. Yeah, yeah. And I think I had three or four birthday parties Hell there. Yeah. <laughs> like, right, yeah. It was... Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, also... Very very, very good memories attached to that. Although I, I lived in a college town, I lived in Auburn and on campus, they had an arcade that was supposed to just be for the students, uh-huh. but that door was unlocked on Saturdays. So my friends and I would just ride down and we just had our own personal arcade, like a 10 minute oh, bike yeah, ride away. Sure. So we could play all that shit, Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Yeah. All. Colleges. I don't know if they still do, but yeah, colleges have some good arcades sometimes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Auburn's now, they don't have an arcade. They just have a room that's just PlayStation 5s. Oh, yeah. Where you could just sit there and just sure. play video well, games. But. Now, Rivers, have you been to the arcade right down the street yet? Family arcade, yes. You, st- uh, you have been. Classic. Teenagers selling drugs in paper bags. Yep. Paper well, bags. Not arcade. even plastic. So glad it's still it there. It was so classic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally saw, like, I was like, that's a child. Like, it was the first time in my life I ever just felt the urge to grab someone by the collar and be like, hey, now. Where are your parents? Where are your goddamn parents? <laughs> Find uh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have been there. It's uh, it's pretty rocking. They do have, uh, they got Comanche with the with the fucking okay. pump shotguns and uh-huh. shit. Cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, the staple's got to be Time Crisis. Does it have Time Crisis? I believe it does have Time Crisis. It also has Day- the Daytona uh, 500 oh, yeah. one nice. from the 90s. Is with the with the motorcycles that you sit on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I used to just sit in those and not <laughs> put any. 
Yeah, you didn't just sit. And then I just like to see it. Well, the ones with the motorcycles, you rock back and forth. Yeah, pretend like you're on a motorcycle. Absolutely, put in money. Yeah, and they have the little screen playing, so you can just kind of pretend along with the screen. Yeah, we wanted me and my brother wanted the time crisis guns that had like the cocking recoil action. Oh yeah, we wanted those just to like play army around the house. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's I'm I uh, for a number of reasons I'm sure those types of peripherals are like out of vogue, but I yeah. do remember when we were kids like the hyper realistic cocking action oh, gun yeah. you could get to play video games. Yeah. Oh yeah. Have yeah. You, have you been to the Redondo Pier? I have not. They have a great arcade. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh cool. Yeah. 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 Okay. At least I think so. As of like 2019, I think was the last time I was there. So okay. Who knows what the hell's I'll happened? But uh, yeah, I did a did a comedy show there that went okay, <laughs> but <laughs> it was all right because yeah. I walked down to the arcades. <laughs> Come for the titters, stay for the games. Oh, it was. Oh uh, God, there's no titters like Marina titters. Like mm. I there was an. <laughs> <laughs> it was an open window where I was like, if these people hated me enough, they could throw me into the sea right. from the stage, just out the window <laughs> into the water. It could guaranteed medium room called Titters and Fritters. <laughs> <laughs> no one is allowed to laugh. <laughs> it, can... it looked like a bar from a, like a Steven Seagal movie. Like it was that close to the nice. water where it was like someone could be karate flipped into the harbor pretty easily. Nice here. view. Yeah, yeah, people are enjoying the view. Why would they? You know, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're having a good time. We're so sorry, Uncle Albert. We're so sorry if we cause you any pain. We're so sorry, Uncle Albert, but there's no one left at home, and I believe I'm going to rain. We have a segment on the show called Top 3, where we get our listeners to write in to us with prompts, and then we come up with top three lists to populate and opine upon. First up, this might actually uh, tie into that last thing. Our friend uh, listening down in the Sunshine State at Damiana Demock. Top three places to kill an hour. Mm, yes. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I've, I've got mine. I'm going to do mine really quickly. Number three. It's kind of a, a 1A, 1B situation here at number three because it's sort of the same thing. Bed Bath & Beyond or the Container Store. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And yeah. for the same Great reason, choices. because it will take exactly an hour. I'm, yep. I'm thinking of things that really do consume one hour. And I hate that the Triple B uh, down by LAX <laughs> uh, closed because that was my go-to. If I was picking someone up from the airport, I would oh, yeah. say, when you get out to the curb, call me. And they have a whole parking lot and there was a Triple B there. And I get there like, 30 minutes early, walk around Triple B, and then they'd call okay, me and great hack. pick them up. Great hack. And they had yeah, a, but what's, they, what's there now? Uh, it was the Spirit Halloween, and now okay. it's nothing. Nah, <laughs> so, nah. okay, and the Spirit Halloween time. started locking the fucking bathroom. Triple B. I was going to say, I, Triple I, I, B I don't had know, a great bathroom. I don't know if I can attest to the Triple B, as you call it, <laughs> but the container store, a welcoming. Oh, oh, the one at the so farmer's warm. market? warm. Oh. Bathroom. Oh, a okay. wonderful bathroom. And weird thing about that bathroom, and this is very strange and specific and for nobody, whatever combination of cleaning solutions they use to clean that bathroom is exactly the same as the bathroom in my high school. So, like, it's one of those, you know, scent is very strongly attached to your brain. Right. So I walked in, I'm like, the 800 building? Mr. Kilgore's economics class. Yeah. Like, you know, like, it could just come rushing back. Uh, my number two, and this is, this is just for LA people, but you're going to know it when I say it, Venice Beach. Yep. Doing, yeah. Doing nothing. And it is entertaining because Venice Beach, if you think about the American mindsets, you know, go west, young man. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the continent. And this is also the reckoning of the American psyche because oh, people wow. come to Venice Beach thinking this place will change me. You know, I'm going to get some kind of enlightenment. And then they are met with the horror that the only way to change you is you have to change you. The place isn't. So uh, and also you could sit there and watch guys, you know, deep. walk on broken glass <laughs> and eat fire. And uh, yeah, that too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just a literal parade of delusion and also you get to watch the the reggae for kids guy try to scam people into buying uh children's uh, oh, reggae yeah. albums sure which he just plays on a loop he has a little red wagon that he pulls a boom box that is just on a loop playing Eensy, 
like that uh, <laughs> just over and over reggae i wonder what is happening to that economy that like guy who sells cds economy oh, in a world oh, I stu- where we I, 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 don't listen to cds that much. as i said as a tour guide i study this uh, because the first thing i have to do when i have groups from out of town when we get to a place like venice beach or hollywood boulevard i have to say hey when a guy comes up to you with a cd just know he wants money. The CD is not free. So unless you want to give the guy 10 bucks, don't take the CD. And, you know, it's usually Americans and Brits are cool with that. My problem is with Australians and Canadians who are way too friendly. Oh, we'll just yeah, walk up sure. and be like, yeah, what do you got going on there? And you're like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't. ask them. <laughs> yeah, no, don't. Yeah. <laughs> they'll stop it. But no, they've started uh, handing out uh, postcards with like a QR link to their Spotify. And I'm just like, I'll just go to your Spotify. Yeah, I know. That's a weird. That's <laughs> so, I'm, I'm sure that that uh, that racket took a hit. So. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Our thoughts go out to yeah. all the <laughs> CD salesmen. Oh, God. My favorite <laughs> ever was uh, in Atlanta. There was a guy who called himself Agent Smith and like the Matrix. And um, <laughs> he couldn't decide if he wanted to be like a nerd rapper or like a gangster rapper. Right. And so he you would have pick s- one. He can- Dude, you <laughs> that can- is one thing yes. where you cannot really be both. <laughs> right. yeah, 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 you exactly. really do have to pick one. And he would have songs about Transformers and murder. And oh you're like, you can't fucking do both. I'm sorry. It's the well, one's going to sound like you're putting on air. So one's yeah. going to sound like you're lying. And it's... yeah, and there's a lot of ways where you can meld musical genres. I think yeah, if yeah. you're, you know, sure. a, a, a hardcore band, you can have some metal riffs yeah, if you for want sure. to. Sure. Yeah. If you're a country artist, you can have some rock guitars. <laughs> but yes, nerd rap and gangster rap. Uh, there's, I don't think there's a really an elegant way to combine those. The line I'll never forget is he goes, Agent Smith, I refuse to be a mannequin. Welcome to the dark side. You can call me Anakin. Oh and then, gosh, the, and yeah, then the next track the was Star like, Wars "Bitch, I'll prequels. kill your family." And you're like, Duh. "You just talked about a Star <laughs> Wars prequel." <laughs> you fucking nerd. I don't know. Maybe he's onto something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's try it. Uh, and my number one, and this is uh, easy, graveyards. I am okay. <laughs> okay. A little more of a controversial. Uh, no, uh, I'm pick. a. I, and it's this. My, this is just a personal thing. I'm a graveyard guy. When yeah. I go to any new town. I want to see the I fucking graveyard because you can mm-hmm. tell who lived there. You're like, oh, there's a bunch of German last names. Oh, this used to be German people, whatever. <laughs> but also you find interesting. Just one hour, right? Huh? It's a great place to kill one hour. Yeah, absolutely. It's one it's, hour. It's exactly an hour because that's when you kind of get bored of it. But you find the major, whoever the thing is. And the most recent uh, great graveyard I went to was in Louisville, Kentucky, where the, I would say, arguably the two most famous sons of Louisville are both buried, those being uh, Colonel Sanders and Muhammad Ali. Okay. Are in the same cemetery. And you just uh, got to have two. That's pretty good. I mean, it's pretty good. Better but... than Mission Viejo's Raj Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> but I leave a flag. Flower at the grave of Roger Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, Raj. He's probably still alive. <laughs> That's not the guy who got. St- I'm thinking of the guy from Cheater- Cheaters. The the oh, host who got stabbed. <laughs> Joey Greco. Yeah, Joey Greco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Different, different dating show. You gotcha. Um, no, but uh, Cheaters isn't a dating show. Right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of the antithesis. Yeah. Of, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, that's called uh, Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. And while I was in between Muhammad Ali's grave and Colonel Sanders' grave, I discovered there was a grave with this gigantic statue of a guy kind of like holding his hand out and he had a cape and I was like, well, who's this guy? You have my full attention. This is a huge life-size statue. And it was a guy named Harry Collins, who was known as the Frito-Lay magician. Okay. So he was a magician who ran out of work as a magician and went to work at the Frito-Lay plant. But and, still did magic? Well, so the guys, he didn't tell anybody he was a magician at first. And everybody at Frito-Lay was like, oh, yeah, this guy worked with Harry. And then he slowly let it slip that he was a magician. And Frito-Lay promoted him to be the official magician of Frito-Lay. That rules. And he spent like 40 years touring the country and like giving out free chips and doing magic tricks for kids. <laughs> I was like, yeah, see, you wouldn't know this shit if you didn't go to a damn graveyard. So that's my top three. Container Store, Triple B, Venice Beach, and Graveyards. Jordan. Okay. Uh, I will say, I was going to say Arcade. Um, that's perfect. They're not Great. as numerous as they once were. But I feel like anytime you're in... A modestly hip place. There's kind of a semi-ironic arcade you can go to. Uh, we got. I think about every city. There's at least one. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And yes, I would say Family Arcade that we were mentioning is 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 not ironic. That is no. as OG an arcade as you can. It's for sure. It, it is the arcade from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Absolutely. There's kids dealing yes. drugs. Yeah, in it. right. The, the Foot Clan is <laughs> yeah. practicing their skate tricks. <laughs> yeah, it is very. Elias Cotius is or whoever played yeah. Casey Jones is uh, beating the shit out of kids wearing yeah. a hockey mask. Yeah. Uh, uh, so arcade, 
find one. Uh, there is a chain that I am really partial to called the Corner Bakery Cafe. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, my girlfriend used to work at Corner Bakery. You <laughs> can just hang out. Westwood. The There's one in Westwood. Oh, is there? Okay, yeah, I, bet, I, I bet it's I great. I used to go there before the mic at the improv space in nice. Westwood. I got my car towed there once. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is just, you know, it is, it's kind of a Starbucks and it's kind of a Panera and everything right. is a little better than you think it's going to be. Yeah. Pretty good value. The Wi-Fi always works. Uh -huh. They always have a lot of seating. You can just hang out in one of those for as long as you fucking want to. <laughs> no one's paying attention. No one's paying okay. attention. As long as you buy one coffee, you're fine. Always have a clean bathroom. Yep. Uh, yeah, they are. these are like perfectly serviceable restaurants that I just like love. And every time I'm like on a road trip or in a you know, weird part of town. I'm like, oh, thank God there's a corner bakery here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. should be their spokesman. Yeah, honestly. I know. If corner, I don't know anybody I that rides hard for corner bakery. I, yeah. I admire it, though. It is, yeah, it is so down the middle. It's hard to feel <laughs> strongly about. And when right. I realize, I'm like, oh, I think I love this place. <laughs> uh, that was a big day for me. So, corner bakery, I'm part of their rewards program. Oh, hell yeah. Get a little get a little free coffee every, every couple weeks. It's great. <laughs> All right. Nice. And then, and this is not uh, explicitly to plug my upcoming comics project, Pop's uh -huh. Chocolate Shop of Horrors, fucking comic book store. Hey, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Every town has one. Yep. It is a good place to like see some local weirdos. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. oh, yeah. uh, sometimes they're like really nice, but also like the dingy ones are totally fun oh. too. And you can buy like one issue and like feel like you patronize the place. Comics can get a little expensive when you're buying those collections and stuff like For that. For sure. sure. But like if you're just there to browse... Buy yourself one Spider Man. Yeah, you can enjoy it while you're eating lunch later. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. They're just kind of like cool places. I love the you know little local variants. Oh, and uh, yeah, it was fun to talk to the the town's cranky. Uh, the, they're comic always book owner. It's like the Simpsons thing is so spot on that yeah. it's like uh -huh. it, 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 they are all cartoonish in that way, and they're not necessarily that character comic book guy, but they're they, variants. They yeah, all have yeah. ours. Uh, he just passed away recently. Uh, shout out to John at Collector's Corner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that yeah. dude smoked so much that when you bought comics from his store, your whole room would just reek of cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> my mom thought I was smoking at age like seven. She was like, "What the fuck? It smells like a fucking bar." in here I'm like god oh, what's collector's <laughs> corner today but yeah and that dude right, always such a weird like kind of guy that, that had to interact with kids a lot oh yeah right. oh they john. inevitably did not like kids yeah <laughs> john died in the way i want to die dancing on a chair at a bar hell yeah he was at the bar my friend tony brooke was on stage playing some good old country music john got up on the chair to dance and that and then just was like got a heart attack had a heart attack oh and my yeah. died wow. in the middle hell of yeah. dancing on a wow. chair wow legendary yeah. yeah it like died immediately go, yes. there's nothing to mourn that's that's the a, a, a very happy way to go out that's the all, best way to go out so <laughs> yeah exactly Jesus. carter what about you i was gonna say like used media store yep. oh yeah like uh any used cd uh, used records, anything is used. Like, it, like comics. I do love comic book stores. You could take that up a notch. Ant yeah. antique malls. Antique oh, yeah. malls. Uh, I like antique cool. malls. Uh, but yeah, like anything that has like it's it's got to be used because yeah. I do like wasting my money on bullshit that's just gonna hang out in my trunk and uh, and collect dust in my closet and stuff. Maybe. So like yeah, like used stores. Like um, you're sitting you, in front of a uh, a twelve foot tall tower of records. Yeah, right there, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I mean, in at, at my house, they have like a stacks of comics that I still haven't read. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm like you know I'll, I'll go to like a comic store where it's not nice and pristine and it's like $25 for a graphic novel. I can get this for $15 <laughs> in a place, uh, you know, if I go It's a good out, place to grumble. If I, yeah. If yeah. I just go to nine different garage sales, I yeah. might find it for I slightly less. It, <laughs> yeah, I might find it for $10 less. Yeah. I can spend $25 in gas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you use, uh, and that was, that was a big thing in the, um, in the South and here too. Oh, uh, uh, shout out Orange County, Orange, California. There's yeah. like 10 antique malls around Beautiful that square. Yeah. 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 My sister uh, lives there and yeah. it, or well, I guess she doesn't live there anymore, but she did at one point and it was always fun to go visit her and yeah. stroll around the antique mall. Yeah. Maybe you can, you might get a, might get a puppy on uh, the way out or something. You, know, you, know? Puppy. you get a VHS copy of Bushwhacked yeah. or something, you know, so, <laughs> but like, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean like there's a place in, in the South called McKay's that I really liked that was like use books, Use comics, use. Is that Birmingham? Movies. 
It, it, it was uh, uh, Chattanooga and Nashville. Oh, okay. And uh, it's just rules. It's this big used uh, media warehouse, and it was so fun. Nice. And I would waste countless amounts of money there, and it was so fun. <laughs> um, so that that uh, I, I guess I'll I'll go ahead and just say McKay's and and, and specify it. All right. Um, let's see. Number two. This is the indoor and outdoor variety malls. Okay. Just, yeah. Just malls, like you know, like uh, I don't know, like. Just seeing like the dying relics of stores that sure. that like you know don't need to exist anymore. Go oh, to yeah. a mall and say, "Wow, most of these places just sell anime stuff now." Yeah, most <laughs> these places sell sell anime stuff now. Where can I? Where else can you find Sabaro's Pizza? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. And, and they're also like yeah, there's like you know like a, a a dusty old like GameStop or something. Yep. And then you walk by there's but there's like a huge Dave and Buster's, if not an actual Dave and Buster's, like a variant thereof. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've always liked malls when I was a kid. I just walking around, I'm going to, hanging out in food courts and shit like that. Oh man, a food court Chinese place. Yeah, yeah, hard to beat. Yeah, I know hard that is like walk, always dude. the hidden the hidden gem of the food court. It's the like unaffiliated, non chain, yeah, not styrofoam th- container Chinese place. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. always fucking hits. Ooh, always yeah. hits. And then Mrs. Fields, grab a Mrs. Fields on the way. Oh out. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, one hundred. Get a get a double doozy. You know, like a, <laughs> a, a fun day. Oh, very fun. And uh, I guess number one, it's not specific enough, but whatever. Um, my car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> driving, sure. around, driving in L.A. I yeah. will drive aimlessly in a direction and yeah. drive back uh, yeah. or whatever, or like drive to like a, a national park and sit. If, I mean, there you go. we're surrounded by, by a lot of beautiful stuff that is right it's within Los Angeles, but also right out of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I moved here at 32, so I'm still like kind of discovering stuff here. So it's like. I don't know, like driving to the San Gabriel Mountains being as close as they yeah, are. Sure. I'm like, that's that's a cool way to, for to kill an hour or two. Yeah, I plan to do that uh, when they plow it uh, yeah. to see some snow in a couple listen, days. Listen to a podcast. I, I listen. Yeah. I try to. I, I got way into listening to podcasts two years ago, uh-huh. but I've been always listening to like music constantly. So right, like, right. I, I am suited for being in a car. Like the traffic thing doesn't bother me. I could listen to podcasts and albums all day. Hell yeah. All right. Well, shout out to Damiana. Thank you for that question. Next up, uh, this one comes to us from our friend at Andy Awancio. Top three songs to put on a jukebox before a fight breaks out at a bar. <laughs> mm. Is it, I liked this question. I I like this question too because I'm I'm interested in everybody's approach to it because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm extremely non-confrontational. So. Same, same, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So all of this is ironic detachment for sure. me. That's what yes. I'm going to say. It's like I don't. No one's going to have an actual like. You know, one time I fucked this guy up. Yeah. So I'm like, no, no one's going to actually have no. an answer. No, but also it's a thing of like I don't really hang out with the types of people who get in fights at bars necessarily. Right. No, yeah. I I've tried. Yeah. And if you did, you distance yourself from it. Uh, yeah. Ago. <laughs> Those people get like cold. Well, they're from toxic, the, and from I wouldn't. Shouldn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get, you know, I, I'm friends with people who cry at bars. Damn it, not fight. Uh, but or uh, eat too much at bars. <laughs> oh yeah, well, that's me. That's, yeah, that's me, me all day. But so you know, with that in mind, at least for me, I, this is going to be very much like an ironic detachment situation. These are people fighting that I don't know. So I am going for. Let's be honest. Maximum comedy here. Sure. Uh, yes. Sure. I mean, this is a fun. Yeah, you, a, a fun place for some juxtaposition. <laughs> yes. And, sure. And sure. The, and the thing people like don't take into consideration about fights. They're usually very short. Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion, your thing has to hit immediately. Like it's. Gotta, oh, that's a good point. There can't be a big buildup. Can't be a big buildup. It's got to be either a thing that everybody knows by, like the, they'll either know the song or that they can recognize immediately that it's inherently ridiculous. Uh, mm-hmm. So, with that in mind, uh, my first one here, number three. The this is what I'd put on if there was a bar fight. The new tradition, that's right, they are the 1985 World Barbershop Quartet Champions and their song Parade Medley. <laughs> you know, just like, come it on, bring it on, motherfucker. These are all songs about parades. It's a medley. Yeah, it's a medley of songs they have about parades. Enough songs about parades. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Like, what's a song about a parade? Yeah. Well, this one. This, yeah, this I know one, this I guess. One. Yeah. But I don't know another one. <laughs> just imagine a bunch of guys kicking in a, you know, kicking a gouging in the blood, mud and beer uh, with this going on. Uh, so that was uh, that was my first one. My second one, of course, because, uh, you know, like I said, you got to hit either, in my opinion, 
like directly funny, something like that, uh, something that's obnoxious, or uh, you know, something that is uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll, you'll you'll know with my number one. But mm-hmm. uh, for for obnoxious, I considered Metal Machine Music uh, by Lou Reed. Just, oh, just something <laughs> challenging, like just sure. just Dissonance. clanging bullshit. But yeah. uh, I've done that at a bar before. And I thought it was real funny. <laughs> <laughs> you they have had to do that inter- as you leave. An internet jukebox, and yeah. I put on a what was the first the first song on each one teach one by Oni Ida, which is a fourteen minute single tone. Yeah, oh yeah. God. And they're like, turn this shit off. Like I heard the bartender yelling that. So uh, but yeah, I thought I was being so funny. <laughs> Along a similar line, of course, uh, Free Jazz by Ornette <laughs> Coleman. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, just, it does kind of lend itself to a chaotic bar fight, though. Just random squeaking and honking, you know. Uh, so that would be my number two. And then, of course, my number one. because it makes it filmic, almost. I, I mean, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, number one, you got to absolutely, uh, like I said, you got to catch him immediately. And everybody is going to immediately know this, you know, but you throw it on. And then considering the situation, got to be a lot of chuckles. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> and you know what it is immediately. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Immediately. Yeah. Got that, that little guitar hit at the beginning. And then it's Marvin Gaye. And then all of a sudden that fight. Just turns into fucking yeah yeah you know? public fucking uh, look. enemies to fr- en- enemies to lovers <laughs> <laughs> someone once said the opposite of love is not hate it's indifference so if you're fighting yes, you're that exactly. close to loving yes. you are um, so close exactly, to loving one yes. another <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, it's easier to turn those frowns upside down. Because <laughs> well, what happens is the two people fighting, they're still pissed, but everybody else is now in a great mood for this. Because well, now they want it like <laughs> this song owns. First of all, it's a great song. It's a great but song, all, but also uh, you know, contra- you know, contradictions, uh, dichotomy, if you will. Yeah, uh, yeah. So anyway, that's my top three. Parade medley, <laughs> free jazz, mm-hmm. and let's get it on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you got, Jordan? Uh, yeah, so, okay, uh, the first thing that comes to mind, uh, maybe, for some, would be <laughs> Thin Lizzy's The Boys Are Back in Town. Oh, oh yeah, of course. I would song. say that there is a better Thin Lizzy song for fighting, their their next biggest hit, Jailbreak. Jailbreak. Oh, God, get yeah. out of here, Thin Lizzy, fuck yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, I mean, right? Yeah. Fuck Come yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I like this song. I uh, like this whole album, but this this is my favorite of the oh, hits. Top, top, on top the to album. bottom, this record is flawless. Oh, yeah. Oh, they rhyme Romeo with Onio. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Geniuses. So, yeah. Uh, Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak. Uh, if we want to bring a little more of a fun, <laughs> light vibe, we were talking about Scott earlier. It got me thinking about Fishbone's party at Ground Zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, kind of, you know, like fight as general rowdiness. Okay. This song does have a long ass intro. Oh, okay. It has a long ass mm. intro, and it, it does this for a little while. Sure, it's Fishbone. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this uh, is their thing. Weirdo geniuses. Uh-huh. Um, but once that kind of like main riff kicks in, I think uh, maybe like a minute in, I think you got some good fight music. I mean, it's here. it's it's kind of Ornette Coleman-y right now. A yeah, little bit. yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's pretty wavy. There you go. See, this is it. Yeah. There's a Circle Pit esque kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely. If there's a yeah, if if you're working with perhaps an iPhone situation and not a jukebox where you can just kind of fast forward right to the right to the action. Yeah, and I think yeah. there might be a radio edit of this that like kind of starts. With, uh, okay. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah, it's perfect because you're like it, it does kind of sound like fighting, but there's horns too, so it's fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the proceedings fun. Sure. Yeah. And I don't know. Uh, let's just go thong song for the third one. Let's Ooh, go thong song. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, there we go. I mean, you're kind of thinking of this song along the same lines as me. Is you you take a song that's uh, that's pretty sexy. And, yeah. I mean, <laughs> everyone's gonna know it immediately. Yeah. You know? I love the cello part. I forgot about the cello part of the. Beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of kind of brilliant when you think about it. This oh, is like yeah. the, one of the more <laughs> operatic songs <laughs> of our generation. Oh songs. God. <laughs> Love it. Uh, <laughs> bring it on, dude. You don't think I can fucking whip you? I can whip you, buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. What you got, Carter? So you know how you had like the third one that's like... Sexy. Like, wouldn't it be funny if there was a sexy one? Yeah. That's like all three of mine. Oh, good, uh, good. Yeah, we're all thinking the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, you spin me right round. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know that that's a good bad choice this might just be a good good choice it might be a good good choice i mean it's this instantly instantly recognizable for sure i guess i guess i just think anything that's like 
New Wave is going to be funny when Juxtaposed right. told me, like, I'm going to kill you, motherfucker. Yeah, oh, yeah. I was definitely thinking, lies, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of those type she songs. She blinded me with science. Oh, oh man. Yeah. yeah, there we go. <laughs> I don't know what happened if a girl blinded me with science. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, yeah. Number, I uh, see another thing. What's like a funny, like, I mean, bar fight that ends in tragedy someone goes to jail right. someone maybe loses their life to mambo number no. five by oh Lou Vega. Gosh, yeah now we're yeah. thinking yeah absolutely and that's again, not really sexy but instantly recognizable i mean ladies and gentlemen this is mambo number no. five <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it. You know it. It's, <laughs> it's the hat, man. <laughs> okay, I don't know that this is a bad choice. I this might. I mean, just like like energy wise. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think. I think energy. Yeah. It's like you know, you're 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 pumped up. You're ready for the game. <laughs> um, you can you know, fight. Monica, you yeah, can fight. Yeah, you're gonna fight Erica. <laughs> Erica, <laughs> Debra. Debra. <laughs> yeah, you know, this motherfucker's been staring at you all night the wrong way, cross, and <laughs> yeah, and you're about to put a little mambo in his life. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Hell and then yeah. <laughs> number one, hit me, baby, one more time by Britney Ooh, Spears. Sure. Yes. I mean, talk about instantly iconic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that. Oh, that, that, uh, that. Fine. Swedish production on this one. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a perfect one. You can yeah, hear the Swedes. Yeah, you really can. You're <laughs> good. Yeah. Well, that is the uh, the reason it's uh, the you know the song doesn't make any fucking sense. Sure. Uh, it's because it was written by Swedish guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Same with uh, I want it that way by Backstreet Boys. Also, yes, I'll run through Google Translate. Makes yeah. no goddamn sense because it was written by Swedish people. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, man, that's perfect. Well, shout out to Andy Awancio for that question and uh, pick up Andy's uh, new stand up album. It's Our trans- called Hard Trans uh, out now on Radland Records. But yeah, thank you so much for writing those in. If you have top threes you wish us to opine upon, please, please, please tweet at us at the Goods Pod. Fellas, we have time for just one more segment. And of course, since Jordan Morris is here, an Orange County man, mm-hmm. I figured we got to have a goddamn Orange County band yes. for this one. We are going all the way to Huntington Beach, the aforementioned, yes. Yes. with uh, the pride of Huntington Beach, California. That's right. It's Avenged Sevenfold with their I song. They were. I guess they were. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this hmm. is their song, Nightmare. <laughs> Uh, and so, Jordan, uh, critics have their opinions on music, but we don't sure, give a shit what sure. the critics think. Up in their we, ivory towers, yeah. mm. polishing their monocles. We, yeah. we <laughs> want to know what the people think. <laughs> right. And the only place to find where the people are and they're openly thinking is the comments mm-hmm. of YouTube. That's <laughs> right. Some would say indicting themselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, especially with this kind of music. Uh, so let us now dive down into the uh, comment section of... Get some tasty double bass, though. Yeah, Come well, on. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Dave Portnoy from uh, Dream Theater because their old drummer died, and so they brought him in for this album, it turns out. Uh, I didn't know that. Had to filter out a lot of R.I.P. Uh, the Rev comments because his name was The Rev. Mm-hmm. Uh, well. But this uh, this song has a, a shocking amount of views, 197 million views on YouTube. Uh, wow. And 116,438 comments. And y'all... Found the best. Uh, <laughs> so I'm excited. All right. Let us now dive down into the comment section of Nightmare by Avenged Sevenfold. First up, Jerry Lopez from three years ago. I dedicate this to my ex-wife's future ex-husband. She is a nightmare. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> a lot happened Ugh. in there. Um, so. yeah. <laughs> you always got to try to get the flavor of these. Like, we, we, this section's <laughs> always like drunk, uh, angry person at their uh, oh, yeah. ex-wife right. or something. Oh, yeah. This song, is, this song has probably got like a lot of like drunk workout metal kind of stuff going and on. Weirdly, not as much as you would think. Really? I was really bracing for a lot of like, you know, I killed people overseas and I'll do it again. But like, <laughs> then there's like the sublime, like, I like to get fucked up, bruh. Like those kind of Yeah, there might comments. be some of that. Uh, okay, okay. So next up, Jeremy's account from 12 years ago. 
This song makes me want to get in a fight with someone so I can stab him. Oh, my gosh. So I can... <laughs> like, it's okay to stab... I, maybe. I mean, maybe you can plead self-defense. <laughs> if you're just, like, looking to stab someone and get away with it. Yeah, yeah. You start a fight, and you're like, he was going to kill me, so I had to stab him. <laughs> well, was he in a fight? <laughs> well, that's all right. Well, well uh, Asriel Shade from 11 years ago. A lot of shit was going on 11 years ago. This song reminds me of my ex. I listen to Make Me Angry All Over Again. You're like, you don't have to do that to yourself, though. Yeah, what are these comments <laughs> hoping to achieve? Why write, why write this? I've never felt compelled to comment on something in this way. Oh, do just, they have a lot of, like, thumbs-ups? Can you uh, see that information? No, usually not. Yeah. not. None of these ever get any likes, right? I was going to say, and I'm uh, nine years under the ocean at this point, so nobody's seeing these except me. Right. I'm the, I'm the one who remembered. Mm -hmm. um, it funny just go and thumbs-up all these, and maybe yeah. these guys get a notice. <laughs> Five-year-old slam against their ex-wife got yeah. like <laughs> their accounts all. Did they hear the correlating podcast and <laughs> find their way to the studio and kill? Us. Yeah, <laughs> maybe how you guys uh, die. I like to get in fights with podcasters yeah. so I could stab them. They could drive up from Huntington Beach and kill you guys. I know. They <laughs> certainly <laughs> seem unhinged <laughs> enough to do it. Uh, I love this guy's username. The Tang Clown yep. from mm -hmm. 11 years ago. Who can forget? Probably some Juggalo crossover with this band, huh? <laughs> totally. totally. Or, or he just likes Tang. Um, Tang. So he says, I ran into some mofo today who saw me wearing an Avenged Sevenfold shirt. He decided to comment that they were a pathetic band of losers and failures. That totally really <laughs> happened. I asked him to explain further, and he said their music is emo garbage, and they don't even have an official drummer anymore. I asked him if he had any idea what he was saying, and he backed himself up with this music video where they having no drummer. Motherfucker got punched, and now I have a broken wrist. <laughs> what? What in the world? So their drummer died. They bring in the guy from Dream Theater to okay. drum on this album, but in the music video, in deference to the late Rev... They have no drum. Like, the drummer's just not in it because. And the, this guy in the story <laughs> is mad about that? He's, he's, uh, he was some guy tried to confront him with I, some Avenged Sevenfold this guy, knowledge. He like, hates the band, but also <laughs> watches their videos and knows what's going on with them. Yeah. Well, no, some like, guy. After insulting a show, he's like, hold on, let me pull it up. Let me pull out the yeah. video. Hold on, hold on. Like, Look, you see, no what? drummer. No drummer? Yeah. <laughs> what a weird, what a weird thing to feel any way at all about. <laughs> the guy. Who was stopped had his like takeout lunch in his hand. And he's just waiting for him to show the video. <laughs> from Punches him in face, breaks wrist. From Albert Tacos. From Albert Tacos. <laughs> um, Tina Bays from five years ago. I never even heard of this group until my boyfriend got out of jail. Wow. <laughs> it's just, uh, couldn't have written that one better. That was so perfect. Tells a whole story in one sentence. Yeah, for sale, baby shoes, never <laughs> worn. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of those, a lot of those in the comments. <laughs> uh, drag scouts from 10 years ago. I broke up with my girlfriend today, and she said this exact quote. Now your nightmare comes to life. And then she turned her back and left. Oh, God, she has such a beautiful ass. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> People 11 years ago were absolutely losing it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't think any of this happened. I don't think no, any of these people are, are mar have ever been married or in relationship. Oh yeah, no, they are in they are in the Hobbit hole of darkness with right. Aaron Rodgers. Just yeah, it might just be like twelve year olds <laughs> trying to make grown up jokes. <laughs> yeah, it all comes across like drunk murmuring of someone, like a stranger to another stranger right. bar. It could all be lies. It doesn't matter. This person just wants to talk to hear themselves talk. Sure. John Collins from two years ago. My nephew turned me on to Avenged Sevenfold. It was a song called Cunt Crusher. Okay. He played some more stuff by them. There was one song, I can't recall the title, but the drums were so fast it sounded like an M60 machine gun. Hmm. <laughs> so again, this guy's a nephew and he sounds like he's 12. Yeah, I can. Uh, uh, Avenged Sevenfold has a very particular audience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, WT, seven months ago. Yo, this song came out about eight months after my divorce. Two months before I got out of jail, the dude she ended up getting with cheated on her and wrecked her car. It's her fucking nightmare. L O L O L O. <laughs> what? <laughs> it, <is> it, <laughs> He's a time traveler. The, and, and the fact that these are all like taking shots at exes. What a, what a 
brain <laughs> red. <laughs> oh well, this one's not about an ex. This is just uh, this is just smart. Dave T. Two years ago, Biden. But we, <laughs> but but we kept Antifa out of jail. Dot 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 dot. Them, you should have known the price of evil. Dot dot dot. Trump and patriots, no one to call. Your fate is looking so clear. Twenty twenty four will be your fucking nightmare. Oh I'm like, gosh. I can't tell which side he's on. Yeah, <laughs> and why it's on an Avenged Sevenfold song comment thread. This is the place for my message. <laughs> <laughs> my people will my gather. My confusing message. <laughs> <laughs> Barter. <laughs> <laughs> At last, you've entered my domicile. <laughs> Enter my fight palace of my mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> where I fight Biden every day. It's <laughs> a comment under that. Do you like Biden or not like him? <laughs> Yeah. 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 Is Thunk. he calling him out like a professional wrestler? Yeah, yeah. Biden. Biden. Yeah. There's Biden no. stole my manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hit me with a folding oh, chair. There's no Biden maniacs here. Uh, I will see you at SummerSlam, Biden. Biden. <laughs> uh, I got a few more here. <laughs> Lily, Lily Evers, one, two, three, from 12 years ago. I just read that Avenged Sevenfold were touring with Metallica in 2006, and at one point, around 5 a.m., Jimmy killed a pigeon. But then the cops showed up, and Jimmy was running away, but eventually they caught him, threw him in jail. Twelve hours later, he called to the guys to get him, and he wanted pizza and shrooms. And then they went back to their hotel, having an awesome time with Jimmy, eating pizza and tripping on shrooms. What? A <laughs> is Jimmy in the band? Jimmy, I think, I think Jimmy's is in the, band, the drummer. Right? Okay. <laughs> who's dead now. Okay. Uh, a lot of mentions of this drummer. Yeah, I mean, people a were... Beloved, a beloved guy, clearly. If <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's had a colorful life, <laughs> yeah. it, would, it would seem. Uh, eating hallucinogenic mushroom pizza and <laughs> killing pigeons, yeah. which is a little, you know... Yeah, that's kind of dark. Uh, <laughs> it's also, it's a little Aussie. It's a little, like, oh, been yeah. done. Sure, sure, sure. Well, it just says he killed a pigeon. It doesn't say how. He might have just stomped it or something. Uh, uh, <laughs> or, you know, didn't give it the heads up when the bus was coming. Um, <laughs> uh, John Appleseed from 11 years ago. Attention, 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 potheads. With the defeat <laughs> of legalization here in California, the time to act has come. Take seeds from your bags and venture into the wilderness and plant them. If every weed smoker in America did this, the marijuana would grow here naturally, giving us access to limitless plants to take from. Together, we can bring weed to this great nation. <laughs> so, attention, uh, attention. <laughs> attention, weed smokers. Right. Yeah. Oh everyone will, where everyone will find this. Uh, but I do like that he is the consistent, the consistency to have his name be John Appleseed. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. clever. Yeah. So he's the... It's the Johnny Appleseed of weed. Uh, <laughs> it, like, on paper, that plan makes sense. <laughs> uh, Joshua Asher from 12 years ago. I didn't used to listen to Avenged Sevenfold, but my friend insisted. Well, I'm a guitarist and singer myself, so they rock. Despite the tattoos of skulls and devils, which are creepy, in this video, the singer is, like, rapping. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> doesn't like the skull iconography, though. Yeah, oh. it just doesn't, you know. <laughs> no coherent thought in there. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. tattoos are crazy, but the singer's rapping, and I play guitar myself. <laughs> Therefore, take your marijuana seeds and sprinkle them across the country. And remember, fuck uh, my ex. Uh, well, <laughs> what? Well, if you want, uh, you know, absolutely uh, madness, finally... Avalon from six days ago. Hey, there goes the black car that almost hit me at Culver's. Bro, pedestrians have the right of way once that clear making. This is a speech to text one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. The red car is dead inside already. Yeah, I'm batshit crazy. I just threw the dice once more. The end. Cheap perfume. It wasn't the end. It turns out cheap perfumes cost nothing with free samples, and men can figure this one out. Don't fuck with a female's laundry detergent anymore. What? <laughs> happy oh now? Gosh. Are uh, you happy now? I hate it when it turns into open mic night <laughs> on the on these. <laughs> <laughs> you think and thought the youngest didn't know? I'd rethink that and rethought that. I only see what I want to see and hear what I want to hear when you speak. How do you like me now? <laughs> mm. uh, it says. Like uh, like I've done all my life. Try something new, like sleep on your own self. 
And inside my own mind, silently, I am who I am, and I am who I am not. I hide, I hide who I actually am. I'll show you who I am not in very own ways. They're one, two ways now. Poof, story of my life. Wow, it's just like the portrait of the artist as a young man. Yes. Just yeah, we're, we're <laughs> so complex. We really get it. It takes so. years to unravel that one. I did kind of space out while you were reading that. Uh, oh, just I did too. It turned into a weird kind of <laughs> white noise. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, m- most people who interact with this person, I'm sure that, that he has that effect on them. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, and that is Nightmare by Avenged Sevenfold coming straight out the OC. Hmm. And that is our goddamn program. Jordan Morris, yes. where can people find you online and get your new comic book? Yeah, so I do a podcast called Jordan Jesse Go. We just kind of fuck around for 90-ish minutes every week. How long has that been going? That has been going on 15-ish years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got a f- quite a few episodes. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so yeah, just uh, jump in, find a guest you like, and get to listening. MaximumFun.org, Jordan Jesse Go. That's the podcast. And Pop's Chocolate Shop of Horrors, the Archie comic that I contributed to, that we talked about earlier in this show, uh, will be in comic book stores March 22nd. So uh, there will be ways to... Get it online, digitally, stuff like that. But the most fun way, I'd say, is to go to your local comic book store. Pick one up. There's variant covers, all kinds of good stuff. And it's uh, it, it really turned out great. I got to see a PDF of the finished issue, and it really it really uh, is cool, funny, creepy, all that stuff. So, yeah, Pops uh, Chocolate Shop of Horrors. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I imagine you can go to your local comic book store and order it from them too. you can yeah have them throw it on your pull list that always like really yeah. helps the book yeah um, helps the book help yeah. your uh, local uh, comic book store yeah yeah every every, every bookstore is hurting a but, nice yeah. place to hang out a nice place to They're kill an hour kill an hour yeah, kill in an hour absolutely carter where can people find you online uh you can find me at carter underscore glasscock on twitter instagram and tiktok that's that's uh, that's uh, that's about it for me right now. All right, uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rivers Langley. You can come see me at the H I Hostel in Santa Monica on three eleven. <laughs> Funny's the color of my energy. All right, what are we oh doing? boy, <laughs> that's a free show. It's called Comedy in English. Come hang out with me and a bunch of tourists from Spain who don't entirely know what I'm talking about. So fun time. Uh, Eight p.m. You can find our show on Twitter at the Goods Pod. Every episode ever plus lots of clips over at youtube.com slash the goods pod best way to support the show head over to patreon.com slash the goods pod i've got an episode with our friend kyle clark we saw the cocaine bear and we talked about it so oh, man, i gotta see it <laughs> you, you don't wait for it it'll be on peacock in like three weeks so All right. just wait All for right. it to get on the cock <laughs> <laughs> get it on the cock <laughs> <laughs> they should adopt that phrase. <laughs> uh, well, every wrestling fan calls it that because that's where they show WWE. Ah. So everybody goes, I saw it on the cock. <laughs> We're saying cock. Um, <laughs> that's what you say. But yeah, it was really hey, fun. As, as, as being in my last name, I get it. I oh, get yeah, it. Yeah, you know? fun. fun to say. Real fun time. So go check that out. Second best way to support the show. Head over to Apple Podcasts. Rate, review, and subscribe. Show the attitude of gratitude. Because if you do not have the attitude of gratitude, daddy... We're going to put you in a hole with Aaron Rodgers. The Goods from the Woods was recorded and edited by me, Rivers Langley. You can find our show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by Jonas, the Space Cowboy. This was a Brain Freeze podcast. <laughs>